This is a special presentation from News Channel Nebraska. This broadcast is presented by Currency. Does your business need financing for equipment, trucks, or trailers? Visit GoCurrency.com. Ashley Furniture. Visit your local Ashley store or Ashley.com. And Liberty First Credit Union, banking with purpose. Find out more at LibertyFirstCU.com. Good afternoon and welcome to Foster Field at Cope Stadium for this presentation of College Sports on News Channel Nebraska. I'm Michael Shifley, joined on the field by Scott Hoffman, and we're getting ready for a clash in the MIAA, pitting the 6-2 Nebraska Kearney Lopers against the 6-2 Northwest Missouri State Bearcats. You hear those records, Scott, they're even. And these are two high-profile teams hoping to make the playoffs. They can't lose again. That makes this almost like a playoff game itself. It really does, Michael. This is a big game. It's uh, one of the bigger home games that UNK's had in several years here. And uh, both teams are really amped up and ready to play this game. This should be a great football game. Northwest Missouri State, a perennial power. But this year, the Bearcats have had a couple of losses. But that defense is still unreal. One of the best in the country. What makes that unit tick? Well, Coach Rich Wright, their head coach, used to be the defensive coordinator, and I know they put a big emphasis on defense. They don't do a lot of stuff, but what they do, they do exceptionally well. Uh, they're only average, giving up an average of one, almost less than two yards per carry. Yep. And so it'll be a challenge for the Lopers today. It's unreal, that rush defense, but the other side has the best rush offense in the conference in T.J. Davis and the UNK Lopers. They're coming off a good road win at Lincoln, but last time on this field didn't go too well against Emporia. What needs to happen for the Lopers offense to get some traction? Well, I think they need to be balanced. They need to throw the ball a little bit. Um, against Emporia, they came out and didn't really compete, uh, complete too many passes. They were able to run the ball early, but then they got behind. In this offense, you've got to be balanced and be able to take some plays down the field when you get an opportunity. We have the Lopers and the Bearcats, key players, and a visit with Coach Josh Lynn coming up on NCN. The pregame show is brought to you by the new 98.9 The Vibe, the Tri-Cities greatest hits. Aloe means reliability, productivity, connect. Aloe means no more of that. Aloe means business, local business, big business, small business. If you need reliable phone and internet connectivity, you need Aloe. Local service and same day dispatch, free installation, symmetrical upload and download speeds. If your business relies on communication, rely on Aloe. Aloe means business. Visit AlloFiber.com forward slash business. The Lopers offense needs to move the football in order to have some success against this uh, tough Bearcat defense. And it all starts and ends with T.J. Davis, the dual threat quarterback. Without a doubt, he's the guy that makes things grow on this offense. Uh, you know, he's got to be able to complete some passes, but his legs obviously will do a lot to determine how well we do on the field today. Defensive line for the Bearcats is tough, and a big reason why is their senior, Elijah Green. Ten sacks, that's fourth in the country. That's amazing. He's not a big guy. He's a little bit undersized. He's a hometown kid from Maryville, Missouri. Let's and he go, just Blue. plays with a big motor and gets things going. Can't wait to get this one started. We'll visit with head coach Josh Lynn of the Lopers next, then get you your starting lineups and kickoff on News Channel Nebraska. Go places. We're ready. Cornhusker Toyota Honda is here, like we've always been, to help you get wherever you're going. Safely, of course. We've got great deals on our most popular models. Start here, just off Deers Avenue in Grand Island. No need to shop anywhere else. Selection, service, people you know and trust. Vehicles you can count on, time after time. Stop in today or start online at CornhuskerToyota.com and CornhuskerHonda.com. Let's go. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. 
Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. Exciting news from Eye Care Associates of Columbus. We are now working together with clinics in Norfolk and Grand Island to form Unity Eye Centers. Yes, it's a new name, but what does it mean for you? Joining together allows us to deliver and share state-of-the-art technology and provide a higher level of care for every patient. Best of all, it's still the same owners and you'll see the same welcoming faces. At Unity Eye Centers, we want to continue to be your eye doctor of choice. Come see the difference that quality eye care can deliver. Coach Josh Lynn with UNK joins me now. Coach, you want to treat every game the same, but this is Northwest Missouri State. It's almost a de facto playoff game. How was practice leading up to this? Uh, it was good practice. Had, had good weeks of practice. The guys were locked in. Um, it is a big game. And so uh, we're ready to go, and uh, we've had a great week of practice. Well, Northwest, their rush defense is as good as it gets in the nation. I mean, throw out even whatever division they're in, how do you get some rushing going against them? Well, I mean, you we're a little bit different uh, scheme-wise. You know, we'll uh, we'll try to option a little bit. Uh, we've got to loosen them up a little bit too. We might throw the ball a little bit, a little bit early. Um, but you know, we're gonna do our thing, and they're gonna do their thing, and we'll see what the outcome is. What are you expecting out of the Bearcats offensively? Well, I mean, a good 50-50 run-pass mix. Uh, you know, uh, you know, they'll run it until they until you stop it, and they're they're pretty effective. We've got a good receiver out there, wide uh, number seven, a wide receiver, pretty good player. They've lost a couple times. What you learn from watching film of those games on some vulnerabilities? Well, I mean, they don't, you know, they don't give up the, very, the, the big play very often. And I think in their two losses, they gave up the big play. And hopefully we can take advantage of some of those today. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you, guys. That's Josh Lynn, head coach of the UNK Lopers. We have starting lineups and kickoff coming up soon on News Channel Nebraska. The Vibe is the soundtrack of your generation. With a music vault jam-packed with endless stacks of the Tri-Cities greatest hits. Classic songs. Greatest hits. The soundtrack of your generation. 98.9 The Vibe. NCN Sports is brought to you by Currency. If your business needs help financing big ticket items, visit GoCurrency.com for details. And by Custom Sports. Represent your school and look good doing it with Custom Sports. Coach Josh Lynn on your screen. His Lopers getting ready to take on the Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State. As the captains approach midfield, let's take a look at your school spotlight. Brought to you by Currency. Does your business need financing for equipment, trucks, or trailers? All you need is Currency. Visit GoCurrency.com. Carney, about 35,000 people. The beautiful Foster Field at Cope Stadium. An enrollment of just over 6,000 here on the campus of the University of Nebraska, and they are the Lopers. That's your school spotlight brought to you by Currency. Josh Lynn in his sixth season leading the Lopers, 10th year as a head coach. Seeing if he can score a statement win for his team this afternoon. 
Let's get into your starting lineups brought to you by certified Piedmontese beef. UNK first, <coughs> TJ Davis, that star quarterback. Montrez Jackson will start at running back. A few different receivers will get some time in the absence of the injured Bailey Torres. Defensively, the line is strong. Tell Spees, Baylor Helmuth in there. The linebackers also exceptional. Nutter, Harrison, Fox, Fair. And uh, starting at corner, Gabe Amagatcher. We could see Jalen Perkins back from a concussion today. On the Northwest Missouri State side, they start Mike Hoensee at quarterback. The six foot two junior comes from St. Charles, Illinois. Braden Wright has also gotten some time at quarterback this year, the senior out of Elkhorn South. On the defensive side, this is the unit to really look out for for Northwest. Elijah Green, our key player at defensive end, but the other linemen, they're not messing around either, especially Zach Howard, the six foot three, 300 pounder out of Bolivar, Missouri. It will be fun to see that defense match up against the vaunted UNK offense. And the Lopers will get the football first. That's when things have gone well. The first offensive possession has netted points every drive this year. Yeah, they've done a great job of, of uh, coming out right away with a, with a good series and driving the ball down the field and putting points on the board. Hopefully they can do the same today. Well, Scott, I don't know what it is about Kearney this year, but we've dialed up nearly perfect weather every home game. It is 63 degrees with a 14-mile-an-hour wind blowing from... Uh, about straight on as you see it. It's coming from behind the press box. So perfect weather and the Lopers hoping for a perfect offensive drive to begin things. Davis and company will trot out there. This offense has been good this season. 34 points per game, nearly 400 yards per contest and this is the top rushing unit in the MIAA. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Thatcher dials up right away. Uh, as far as defense, we don't expect Northwest to do too much. They're typically a 4-1 uh, look uh, at the line of scrimmage and uh, play it very well. Lob pass on play action and a big gainer to begin things. A 30-yard completion as Davis finds senior wide receiver Cody Nelson. A little high-low read there by uh, TJ. Had the number one receiver run into the flat, read the corner, and went to the deep ball to Cody. Cody made a great catch over the shoulder. Nelson with touchdown grabs in each of the last two games after he had a stretch of four games with no catches. So good to see the Albion Nebraska native getting going some. Again, faking to the running back. This time it's a keeper for Davis. He's tripped up. Really good job by that linebacker coming in to make the stop for Northwest Missouri State. Tackle made by Shane Fredrickson. He's actually the strong safety, a redshirt freshman. Yeah, he made a good tackle. Had he not done that, I think TJ might have scored on that play. Yeah, he'd still be running. Your first quarter is sponsored by Region 4 Behavioral Health System. This offense does thrive off of the big play, and a lot of the time it comes from that speeds direct quarterback and his legs. That's Nelson in motion. Davis. Rolling right, throwing right, tall, but caught. Good job by Xavier Delk, the six foot one, 170 pound junior wide out to rise up and snare that football. Yeah, it's good to see it's Xavier Delk and Cody Nelson, two senior wide receivers, have really stepped up this fall and made some big catches. A seven yard completion, Davis has Found his target on each of his first two passes. That's a welcome sight because on the year, just a 52% completion percentage. Enter today, 52 of 100. Looking left, there's Nelson again. He sat down in the middle of the defense at the 23-yard line, fell forward to the 22 for an eight-yard pickup. That was probably TJ's best throw so far. He's three for three, but he really stepped into that one and delivered a great pass. Had Miko Masoner in the backfield. Motioned him out, and the defense might have been thinking about where Miko was, and Nelson found an empty spot. Coach Thatcher spread him out so far uh, in this series. He's 
been in a one back set the entire series. Again, Masoner leaves the backfield with a pulling guard in front of him. Davis turns the corner. TJ Davis jukes inside and out of bounds just short of the end zone. A terrific run by Davis. A lot of little wrinkles that Coach Satcher's thrown at the uh, Northwest Missouri's defense so far. A lot of spread formations, uh, pass, come out, throw the football, and then uh, come out after that and run the ball a little bit with TJ. It's been pretty effective. Hmm, all the way back at the 10, I thought he would have been out more like the three. That's what it looked like to me, too, but. <laughs> so first and goal from the 10 for the Lopers. They're looking to the left side. It's covered up. Davis running for his life, and he loses yardage back to the 14. Drive has lasted just over three minutes so far on your Aurora Cooperative scoreboard. Here's that play just a couple plays ago and see if we can see him step out. Right there. Well, right he's out there. at the eight. Yeah. Was he out before that? I don't know. Now second and goal from the 13. Kearns and Jackson on either side. Davis throwing. End zone off of the back of the linebacker. Isaac Volstead, the junior out of Iowa City, was all over Thomas Twos, forcing the incompletion. Had the right play called there, and Thomas was open early. TJ just needed to lead him out to the front a little bit. A promising drive for the Lopers to start out, but now facing third and goal from the 13. Not an easy position to be in right now. Davis on play action, still surveying, throwing caught, touchdown. He found A.J. McPhee ad-libbing along the right side. And a 13-yard scoring strike for the Lopers. Well, that was a huge play by T.J. making the... Uh, uh, keeping his eyes downfield and A.J. McPhee finding an opening and T.J. delivered a great throw to him for a touchdown. Oh, an enormous play, trying to get confidence at home where both of the... An additional roughing the passer call. That'll be assessed on the kickoff, so uh, that should put Northwest in a pretty tough field position to start with. A.J. McPhee, that's his second touchdown grab of the season. And needed a statement at home. Two of the, the two losses for UNK have been here at Cope Stadium and, and maybe needing to get some confidence at their own home field. And this first drive could provide that with that huge 13-yard touchdown pass. That was an excellent decision by T.J. Junior Gonzalez sends it through, and it's 7-0. In the first quarter, the Lopers defense trots out next. When you want to wear your pride on your sleeve, True Nebraskans turn to NebraskaScreenPrinting.com for the latest screen printing and embroidery design. View hundreds of designs or upload your own for any school activity, sport, booster club, or business. We can do it all in whatever color your pride comes in. Get your group ordering for your event or team at NebraskaScreenPrinting.com today for a fast and convenient turnaround. We're custom sports screen printing and embroidery at NebraskaScreenPrinting.com. Proud to be Nebraskan. <laughs> Michael Shively, Scott Hoffman with you. That's the Northwest Missouri State Bearcats, and that's a program that knows how to win football games, and they're going to play from behind thanks to this really standout play by the Lopers. Uh, TJ did a nice job of, of deciding whether to throw it or, or run the football right there. He got the defensive player to release AJ, AJ and come up, and TJ found him for the touchdown. It was a great job. And you saw McPhee, the celebration there. Love that. 
Good amount of green making the trip this Northwest Missouri program. 27 straight winning seasons. That's the fourth longest streak in the NCAA. Yeah, Coach Mel Churchma took over that program in the uh, late 80s and did a wonderful job with that program. They've cycled through a few coaches, but not too many. It's a place no. that you generally want to stay at, and Coach Rich Wright in his sixth season think intends to do that. Yeah, Rich uh, started out as a graduate assistant there, bounced around for a couple years, came back as a position coach, then became the D coordinator and got bumped up into the uh, head coaching position six years ago. Easy for the Lopers to get the touch back. Now Mike Hohensey and company take the field for Northwest Missouri State. Hohensey looking to throw and immediately has a completion in front of J.C. Nutter. Finding his target, Peyton Carter, the 6'2 sophomore from Kansas. Both teams started their series with a pass, so a little bit uh, unusual for both of these football teams. Northwest moves a little bit quicker in their no huddle than the Lopers do. Pulling it, Hohensey has a big hole. He has the outside into Loper territory. Finally chased out of bounds at the 40 by Trey O'Geen. And that's exactly what the Bearcats wanted to see, a 29-yard rush from the quarterback. That play's called a bash play. You sell the running uh, back one direction, pull lineman the other direction, and the quarterback follows the lineman. Excellent call by the Bearcats. Just 102 rushing yards on the year for Hohensey, so that's not his main game, but it worked out well there for Northwest Missouri State. Now on play action, pressure, and nearly picked off. Armani Webster was there. Had a good chance at it. They were looking for Kayshawn Griffin along the left side, but good pressure. Benovadaya Van Israel helped force a quick pass. Yeah, they had some receivers open on the far side of the field, and Hohensee was pretty well locked in on Griffin there. Armani uh, would have been great had he come up with that. Jamar Moya in motion. It's a quarterback draw. And another good rushing gain for Hohensee. Ben Israel tracks him down, combining with Webster for the stop, but a seven-yard run on second down. Nice lead block by Jaden Brady, sophomore running back. Kind of surprising to see them running the quarterback. That's not something that they major in, but I'm sure just like uh, UNK came out throwing the football, Northwest is trying to do some things that they haven't shown before. Loper fans getting loud for third down and three. Got the defense flinching, the blitz comes, Hohensee unloads, incomplete. Way behind Cole Hembro, the junior tight end, and good pressure from the far side, Willie Fair coming in to force the pass. Hohensee had to unload that football pretty fast. I don't think he was too sure about where he was going with the football there. And really another one that he's fortunate wasn't intercepted. Right. But Cole Hamill has been a standout kicker this season, 12 of 13 on the year. This is distance, though, a 49-yarder. And it barely clears, but it's wide. A penalty flag on the field at the 41. Must have been a roughing call. Running into the kicker and the five yard penalty is enough for an automatic first down. We'll see this again. Mm. Oh, wow. Jalen Perkins, and it looked like Jalen just lost his balance. Yeah, it was uh, Oscar worthy <laughs> by the kicker. Oh my, the huge break early on goes the way of the Bearcats. What will they do with it? First down and 10 from the Lopers 27 yard line. UNK's defense held strong. Got in the face of the quarterback and forced the kick and 49 yards wasn't good enough for Hamill. 
but it doesn't matter. Lots of motion into the diamond formation. It's a handoff right up the middle, and the defense is there. Jimmy Harrison leading the way on the stop against Jay Harris, the freshman running back for the Bearcats. Trey O'Gean filled that hole very quickly from the secondary as well. Jimmy Harrison leading the team in tackles. We've told his story often, the New Mexico Military Institute transfer. Standing 5'10 with heels on has made a huge difference this season. Now second down and nine. Along the left side of the line, Andrew Theobald, the senior from Boise, trying to say it was caused by the Lopers. It was not. Yeah, nobody from UNK's defensive line jumped enough to make him flinch like that. Big guy there at left tackle, 6'6", 310 pounds. Transfer out of Tusculum University. They Still an intimidating athletic, line. Yes, they have a pretty athletic offensive line. They've been nicked up most of the year, though. Four-man pressure from UNK. Fingertip opportunity there for the Lopers. They had Sione Tafalele, the senior outside linebacker in coverage. He might have got a fingernail on it. He might have. Had he been a step uh, sooner on that, he had a chance to intercept that as well. Third and long. The Bearcats need 13 for a conversion with trips to the top of your screen. Might see a screen here. Hohensee stepping up in the pocket, delivers, it's caught for a first down. Ogeen with the stop, the grab made by Rashad Shelton, junior wide receiver from California. And that's the biggest play for the Northwest offense so far through the air. Good job by Hohensee delivering a strike there. Um, UNK dropped eight uh, and only rushed three, and Hohensee had enough time to find the receiver for a big first down. Got 18 yards on third and 13. Everybody on the right side, they run it to the left. Hohensee wrapped up. Uh, Tell Spees, the Mullen native, able to sprint over there and get his knees, but still a solid run, about five yards for Hohensee. Northwest was lined up in an unbalanced formation that time, and I think Coach Lynn is arguing that they didn't ha they had too many people in the backfield. Penalties have been a factor in this game so far. Northwest drive is alive because of one. Hohensee pressured, it's batted in the air. The rush from Atoa Fox gets home for the Lopers. And another third down forced by this UNK defense. Well, they've done a good job of getting them to third down so far. Um, hopefully they can come up with another stop and hold Northwest to a field goal attempt. Opponents have been decent, actually quite good against the Lopers on third down this year. 45% conversion rate for opponents. Northwest Missouri's offense only at 37% on the year. Third down's been kind of a tough situation for the UNK defense. This time the Lopers bring pressure. It's caught. That's a first down, but not a touchdown. Griffin able to corral it, but Fox there to bring him to the turf. Good job by Hohensee there. He hung in there versus a two linebacker blitz, and so the Lopers were in man coverage, and he delivered a strike. Gabe Amagancher was on the coverage, the corner for the Lopers. And now first and goal from the two after the six yard pass play. Handoff and enough of a head of steam for Jay Harris to streak on in for a score. It looked like the Lopers were going to stop the Bearcats without points, but a running into the kicker penalty gives the drive new life, and third down conversions lead to a score. Yeah, Northwest was able to make some big conversions on that, and of course the penalty on Jalen Perkins for running into the kicker was a huge factor in that drive. 
the extra point right on the money and we're tied at seven 653 remaining on the aurora cooperative scoreboard in the first quarter and it's seven each on ncn when you want to wear your pride on your sleeve, True Nebraskans turn to NebraskaScreenPrinting.com for the latest screen printing and embroidery design. View hundreds of designs or upload your own for any school activity, sport, booster club, or business. We can do it all in whatever color your pride comes in. Get your group order in for your event or team at NebraskaScreenPrinting.com today for a fast and convenient turnaround. We're custom sports screen printing and embroidery at NebraskaScreenPrinting.com. Proud to be Nebraska. <laughs> Twelve play, 75-yard drive, taking four minutes and 33 seconds for Northwest Missouri State to score. They were two for three on third down. Those two big conversions coming near or in the red zone. Yeah, one of them was uh, UNK dropped eight players, and the Hohens had enough time to find his receiver through a strike. And then the other one, uh, UNK brought pressure, and he hung right in there and threw a strike for a first down on that one. Levi Gallus was really mixing things up. Uh, brought some blitzes. You mentioned that he dropped a lot in coverage. Gave a lot of different looks to the Northwest offense. I think UNK has to feel pretty good right now on the defensive side of the ball because really they had a lot of opportunities to get off the field there. If they can make a couple of corrections, uh, I think they're going to give Northwest some problems today. Tied at seven. We've played just over eight minutes. Maisner and Jackson are deep to receive this kickoff from the Bearcats. And they'll let it sail into the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the offense, which had its own big third down conversion for a score. Last possession. Well, the last time we were at this field, Scott, the Lopers really struggled against Emporia State after scoring on the opening drive. Then the offense went dry until the fourth quarter. They need to make a statement here and at least get a couple first downs. Yeah, they need to they need to continue to do some of the things that they showed in the first series, mix things up, keep Northwest off balance, and, and like you said, drive the ball, flip the field a little bit. Swing pass to Montrez Jackson, the speedster from Florida, dips in front of the oncoming safety and dives forward for a five-yard game. That Emporia State game we're referencing a 44-21 defeat at the hands of the Hornets here on October 15th. And as much to blame for those 44 points as the defense was the offense because they were three and out often and coach Lynn said it's not all on the defense for that game no when you play a team like Emporia that's going to run an up-tempo offense if you keep putting the defense on the field they're going to they're going to have a lot of success and that's exactly what happened Jerquan Connors the 5'11 180 pounder from St. Louis had it in his hands and was running towards the loper insignia in the middle of the field but the ball didn't come with him yeah, he just had to, uh, needed to look that in before he turned and ran because uh, he would had an easy first down. Another big third down here for UNK. A nifty play designed to free him up on play action there. Zorian Stanton motioning from left to right. T.J. Davis dropping in the pocket, goes deep down the left sideline, incomplete, and no flags. He's trying to find Joe Stiffened, blanketed by the Bearcats' corner. Well, you hate to see that UNK go three and out. Um, now they're going to turn the ball back over to Northwest Missouri. Hopefully Hunter Krauss can get a great punt off here and flip the field a little bit. A Nebraskan over there applying the coverage, the 6'2", 192-pound sophomore Trevin Peak, out of Omaha Burke High School. Here's Hunter Krauss, the Sergeant Nebraska native. It's off a good kick that bounces the Lopers way and rolls out of bounds inside the 35 yard line. The 32. So the Lopers defense right back out on the field. 
Just three plays and five yards later. Just under six to play in the first quarter. Against that Northwest Missouri State offense, which is averaging 29 and a half points per game, 402 Houston, yards per contest. A pretty support. balanced attack, Five but 246 back. pass they versus 157 on the ground. They have been prone to turnovers. If anything's been the weakness and has contributed to some of those losses this year, it's been turnovers, 17 of them through eight games for Northwest Missouri State. Yeah, that's been a huge issue for Northwest all year. And uh, just like in that previous offensive series when they had the ball, there was a couple opportunities for you and K to get interceptions that would have given you and K great field position. So hopefully the Lopers can come out and maybe get a turnover and get things flipped around here a little bit. Trying to get the crowd back into it. It was a boisterous group there during that defensive drive. It is homecoming today, and save for maybe that season opener against Pitt State, this is equal to or better than any other crowd we've had so far. Yeah, you would expect homecoming to be, to be a good home crowd, but Northwest Missouri travels well as well as <laughs> that was redundant as well, and so they brought in a lot of, of their own fans and parents as learning their way. Beautiful day to take in some Division II football here in Kearney. Leaves changing colors in the distance. Sun shining bright. Not a single cloud up there. So UNK welcoming. really should, really needs to get a stop here in my opinion. Feels like a welcoming atmosphere. UNK doesn't want that. It's a quick pass and completion. That's to the tight end, Hembro. 240 pound junior out of Chatham, Illinois, but it's only good for three or four yards. Both teams have come out throwing the ball. Hohen sees so far three of seven for 30, but has avoided the big mistake. With four wide outs, it's a handoff and a nice hole. The Bearcats bounce it near midfield with Jamar Moya, a five foot nine senior from Bakersfield, California. Moya is a quick little running back. He showed a lot of speed when he popped through them. He's the top back on the season. That was his 80th rush of the year. He's gone for 376 yards, about five yards per carry. But it is running back by committee for this Northwest offense. Harrison bringing some pressure. It's a handoff, breaks through the tackle of Fair, spinning four. Jaden Brady gets eight yards on first down. Yeah, you and Kay had a chance to get a loss on, uh, on that play. It just didn't get it wrapped up. Good job of running by uh, Braden there. Darius Swanson eventually made the tackle. The All-American strong safety for the Lopers. Be looking to someone like him to make a play on defense few picks on the year for the Colorado diamond formation again another handoff to the tailback and it's enough for the first down just a couple of yards to Brady got it done for the Bearcats though brings the ball to the 40 yard line of UNK steady drive developing for Northwest Missouri State trying to replicate what they did last possession. They're not scared by a third down. No, they showed some uh, resilience when they completed a couple of those third down passes in the previous drive. A little cross, bus, uh, cross buck action oh, by, by uh, Northwest on that play. Jay Harris playing in just his fifth game this year. He's a true freshman out of Wentzville, Missouri. In those four games, has provided a nice burst for 114 yards, about four yards per carry. Northwest recruits nationally, but they do have a good concentration of Missouri natives and people from the Kansas City area. That's complete for a first down. Perkins throws him forward and Griffin. That's a lot of yards after the catch on a simple in route. Yeah, it really was. And 
Uh, unfortunately, Jalen threw forward for about seven or eight more yards, but uh, at least he made the tackle. That was a well-designed play by the Bearcats. About a 15-yard completion. Nearing the red zone, Northwest Missouri State. All their wide receivers are on the left. They run it that direction. Loper defense doesn't allow Brady to escape this time. He does navigate for three. Coach Todd Sturdy, the offensive coordinator for Northwest, is doing a great job of mixing it up between run and pass. He's giving the Lopers a lot of different looks. Harrison and Nutter combining on the tackle. JC, that super senior. Out of Thedford, Nebraska. Three-year starter, solid football player. Here's Hohensey trying to escape the pocket, and he's able to get to the edge. Jogs out, content with getting a couple yards, and it's third down and five for the Northwest offense. Looks like it, the rusher for UNK slipped, Sione Tafalele. Yeah, he, he uh, lost his footing. Otherwise, I think they would have had a pretty good sack there. Third and six. Hohensee to the end zone and no flag. It's incomplete. Griffin is chirping for one, but they didn't throw it. Gabe Amagatcher on the coverage. That brings up fourth down. Your Tom Dinsdale instant replay. Couldn't really get the look at it there. But not enough in the MIAA to warrant the flag thrown. Uh, typically in the MIAA, they, uh, they let some things happen in the back end there. And uh, at least they're consistent for the most part. Cole Lamel, another Nebraskan from Millard South in the Omaha area, sends the field goal kick up and it misses. It's wide. It had the height, but it didn't have the angle. That's his second missed field goal, the first one that counts. And the Northwest offense doesn't get points. The UNK defense able to come up with a stop. Well, that's huge by the UNK defense there. Uh, even just to uh, I'll keep Northwest into a field goal attempt, and then for Lamel to miss that, that's a, that's a big momentum shift. Hopefully the Loper offense can change some things around here and get something going. A 34-yard attempt was wide right for Cole Lamel. Again, he had only missed one field goal attempt coming into this game. He was two for two from 40 to 49 yards, four for four from 30 to 39. His one miss had been from up close and that one wasn't true. Well, now you hope UNK makes him pay for that. So the Lopers from their own 19. They roll Davis out, dangerous pass. He's fortunate yeah, Sam Phillips, the senior out of Western Iowa, didn't come up with an interception. Yeah, that was pretty close there. I think TJ tried to force that a little bit, uh, threw back into the middle, and that's always a dangerous throw. Isaac Volstead, another Iowan, was in the area too. Lopers didn't manage a first down last possession. McPhee motioning to the right. On play action, that time it works. And a burst of speed for Nelson. Cody Nelson runs for a first down to the 34 and a gain of 14. Another big catch by the senior, Cody Nelson there. Nelson brings the ball to the UNK 34-yard line. Came into the season, him highlighted as a guy that was gonna make a difference. Had a grab in that first game against Missouri Southern, but then nothing really until the last couple of contests where he's had touchdown grabs and clearly a featured part of the offense today. Yeah, he's really kind of come into his own here the last few weeks. He had a good year last year as a junior, and uh, it's just taken here a little bit this season to kind of get him going. 
Fake to Damian Kearns. Davis keeps to the short side. Plunges through the defense as a penalty flag flies. Probably a hold against the Lopers there. Penalties adding up. Both sides have now combined for four in the first quarter. So it is against the Lopers, a hold on Nate Bartling, the sixth year senior from Elm Creek, just down the road in Buffalo County. Well, the good news is it's still first down, so hopefully the way UNK's been throwing the ball, they can, they can get a first down out of this situation. Ball in the 26, they need to the 44. First down and 18. Davis running out of time. He eludes one rusher. Now tries to dip up field, and he gets free. T.J. Davis spins away from another tackler and dives for near the first down marker at the 43. How do he do it? <laughs> that is just pure talent right there. I'm sure Coach Wright and the Northwest defensive staff tomorrow is going to look at that and just shake their heads. That's, That's just an two, amazing That's two, three, run. four, five, six, Oh, there had to be a seventh in there. A se seven players that got their hands on T.J. Davis. Instead, he runs for 17 yards on the scramble. Simply amazing. <laughs> Incredible. We're tied at seven. This is a good game developing here between the Lopers and the Bearcats. Just what you'd expect on News Channel Nebraska. As the world keeps changing, so is the way to purchase a new car. Across the nation, there are lengthy delays with new vehicle requests and many being built to order. At Zollner Ford of Beatrice, we're making it easy. With our new Save a Spot program, you can be one of the first in line. We've got a seamless pre-order process that guarantees your reservation is secure and in the queue. And our sales professionals will keep you updated every step of the way on the status of your vehicle. Come reserve yours today. Zollner Ford of Beatrice. Anything for the floor. O Street Carpet has it and more. From little feet to little paws, to updates and overhauls. From soft and cozy to durable and resilient. From something that blends in or something that's different. From DIY to custom install, O Street Carpet can help you with it all. Whatever your needs are for the floor, O Street Carpet has it and more. Tied at seven after one quarter, the Nebraska Kearney Lopers and Northwest Missouri State Bearcats. And an electric play by T.J. Davis. There's no other way to really put it. He needs 126 rushing yards to, the, on the day to day to have his third straight 1,000 yard rushing season. As you see Bailey Torres on your screen, injured, broke his leg a couple weeks ago against Emporia State. He was the top wide receiver on the season for the Lopers. On Flea Flicker, Davis in trouble. He gets drilled and the pass is not close, not intentional grounding because I think it was affected so much by the blitzer. They're going to talk about it, though, the officials. And also the flea flicker. So if Kearns leaves the tackle box, then that should make it clear in theory, right? Exactly. Plus, I think TJ probably was outside the tackle box on the other side. That's a good time for a trick play like that, though. Uh, and actually, Xavier Delk was running wide open. TJ just couldn't, didn't have time to find him. You don't see that long of a pitch that much no. on the flea flicker. That was no. a stretch flea flicker. Normally, it's a dive flea flicker. Now Davis on third and one. He's in trouble. Lobs the football to Kurtz. He makes the over-the-shoulder grab into the red zone. Tackle for the Bearcats. 
the Loper offense has been known as a running offense for the last five years, and they're coming out throwing it all over the place. A 44-yard pass play on third and one. The whole stadium thought that would have been a Davis keeper. Instead, he puts the ball right on the money, and Damian Kearns makes his best grab of the season. Great catch by Damian, ran right underneath it, and it was, the ball was put right where it needed to be. As a matter of fact, that's just uh, his fifth grab of the season. He had four catches for 26 yards before that 44-yarder. TJ just gets rid of that one, throwing it off of the play clock. Second and 10 from the 18. Smart decision by TJ. He didn't try to force anything in that could have been dangerous. Just throw the thing out and live for the next play. About a minute here into the second quarter. Your second quarter is brought to you by Husker Rehab, treating the cause of pain, not just the symptoms. The Lopers, 17 plays so far, 152 yards, 12 of those 17 pass plays. Yeah, they've been throwing the heck out of the football. It's not something you see very often out of UNK. <laughs> Threw it again that time, but Andrew Dumas was ready for it. The sophomore buck linebacker from Olathe, Kansas, gets the deflection. Coach Drew Thatcher, the offensive coordinator for the Lopers, played at New Mexico State when Hal Mummy was uh, the head coach there, and they ran the air raid offense. So he's bringing some wrinkles with him, I think. Still this offense for the Lopers, 272 rush yards on average compared to 119 passing. Flip that type of output. And that's what we've seen so far in the first half and likely a throw coming here on third down and 10. Instead, it is going to be a pass. It's McPhee, he falls down. A.J. McPhee falls down in the backfield at the 28 yard line. Pressure applied by Zach Howard, the senior defensive tackle, and disaster on third and 10 for the Lopers makes this a much longer field goal try. It looked like they tried to leak TJ down the numbers, and Northwest Missouri actually played that very well. Uh, but unfortunately, if AJ just could have kept his feet and thrown the ball away, it, it would make a much shorter field goal attempt here. A 45 yard try for Junior Gonzalez from the left hash. The kick up. And it's good. Junior Gonzalez comes through to put the Lopers back in front by three. Life is a wild ride. It's important to have a trusted partner along the way. Liberty First Credit Union exists to provide its members with affordable financial services. Whether it is a large purchase, a new car or home remodel, overcoming obstacles, or chasing your dreams. Financing life is what we do best. Give us a call or visit libertyfirstcu.com. Junior Gonzalez connects from 45 yards. That's his second 40-plus yard field goal made of the season. His season long was 46, coming in week one in Joplin, Missouri at Missouri Southern. Had some difficulties in the next handful of games, but that was a big one for Gonzalez and the Lopers. You know, it's almost like, uh, I think it was about the third game of the year, he hit a big field goal, and it was almost like his confidence came back. Back, and he's been pretty good ever since then. Now six for 10 on the season. That three-pointer put the advantage at 10 to seven on the Midway CDJ scoreboard. For your next vehicle, go to thinkmidway.com. Michael Shively, Scott Hoffman with you here atop the press box at Cope Stadium, Foster Field, lovely Kearney, Nebraska. This Andrew offense Bradley. for the Lopers has been creative. We were chatting off air, Scott. There hasn't been a traditional handoff to the running back yet, and we've seen a few drives and nearly 20 plays. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that is a completely different wrinkle that Coach Thatcher's thrown at the Bearcats here. I'm sure they weren't expecting that either. 
20 plays for 143 yards for that UNK offense. None of them a traditional handoff. Kyle Failing puts it into the end zone, a touchback. And the defense for UNK got a breather there. The previous possession, they were right back out on the field, had some time to regroup and get ready to take on this Bearcat offensive attack, which has ripped off 127 yards on 21 plays. An average of six yards per snap for Northwest so far, but only seven points to show for it. On play action, Ho and C. That was tipped. Defensive line got their hand on it. Is that Anthony Arajaque? I believe so. Yeah, Anthony's done an excellent job as a replacement for C.J. Sinai, <laughs> along with uh, Ovadaya, Ben Israel. Those two have really been a, done a great job at nose tackle for the Lopers this year. Arajaque, a junior out of Lagos, Nigeria. Hand off to Harris. Harris plows forward for about four. It's third down and six. Number 41, Jay Harris, the ball carrier. Big third down Michael coming up here. It's still early Michael into the second Michael quarter, Michael but, it, but if you and Kay can hold them and get the ball yeah. back here, uh, they've got some it's momentum. Two third down conversions in four tries for the Bearcats. Three wide receivers, and they motion the back out. Hohensi steps, throws, dropped. Harrison on the coverage against Keegan Sturdy. The junior from Lenexa, Kansas, couldn't haul it in. And a fourth down and six looming for the Bearcats offense. Yeah, that ball could have been caught, but it was a good job by the UNK defense to get that ball out of his hands. Three and out, forced. Hohensi is also the punter. It's always Michael something to keep in back. mind when the opposing quarterback is back there to boot it. Definitely provides some fake opportunities. Atoa Fox ranges back, lets it bounce, and it heads out of bounds. We'll see where it's spotted. Right at the 20. That's a 51-yard 50 50 yard punt by Hohensee. So he can do it with his arm and his leg. Yeah, not much of a win, but that was into the wind, and that was a heck of a punt. UNK will send out its offense in a moment. We've made it into the second quarter. Played about three and a half minutes. We do want you to stick around for halftime as well. We'll have your halftime highlights and some fun highlights to show. I can't wait to see that TJ Davis run again. Your <laughs> halftime highlights are presented by Sarder Heyman Jewelers. Sarder Heyman will help your jewelry dreams come true. Halftime show overall is sponsored by the new 98.9 The Vibe. It'll be a longer halftime today because of those homecoming festivities. Some Hall of Famers being inducted. I believe you know some of them, Scott. Daryl Morris among that group. As a matter of fact, Coach Morris and I coached together for 13 years, I believe. Uh, we're roommates on the road, so a lot of history there, a lot of stories. Great to see him get honored. Stayed around Carney after he... Started out in the MIAA, then Josh Lamberson took over, followed by Josh Lynn. So a couple coaches ago is all. Coach Morris had so much success there in the RMAC. Well deserved. Absolutely. Hand off to Miko Maisner. Maisner gets to the outside and inflicts the blow against Volstead, the linebacker. There's your first traditional handoff, and it gets six yards. You know, and it, it just goes to show you, uh, UNK has come out <clears throat> in all the previous series throwing the football, seven, and down, now they've got Northwest Missouri playing the pass, and a traditional handoff goes for eight yards. Well, you're waiting to see Masoner get loose for one. He hasn't been able to 
yet, but he has that track star speed. Flashed out of the backfield here. Davis throws. It's caught Zorian Stanton. Makes the first tackler miss. And his four progress works up to the 30. That's enough to move the chains. A three-yard pass play. Tackled for the Bearcats by 44, Isaac Holstead. Good read by TJ to get the ball to Zorian, but he actually had a receiver, Joe Stephan, running deep that had he been able to hit him, might have been a huge play. Already the sixth receiver to make a catch for Nebraska Kearney. They're waiting for the play call. Stanton is begging to get it in there. Finally comes in. There's 10 seconds still on the play clock. It's a handoff. Masoner crashes forward for a yard, maybe two. UNK has been a team that has spread the football out. Aside for a couple of games where Torres really was the primary guy, they've they have been focused on getting the ball to several different players. You know, uh, sometimes that. You, you hate to see Bailey go down with an injury, but you also wonder if TJ wasn't getting reliant on Bailey, and now he's been forced to find several other receivers, and it's really showing it's, it's been a benefit for the Lopers. Davis in trouble, running for his life, throws high for his back down the right side, and third down and eight coming up after the incompletion. Third down, UNK. Was trying to get it to Montrez Jackson. Pressure from that left side. Reminder that Cooper Reese, the six foot six, three hundred plus pounder, senior captain, out with a devastating knee injury. Did see him walking around though this week uh, outside the weight room. Has that stiff leg brace on. He's hopeful that he can have another go at it in the COVID year next season. Davis on third down and eight, goes deep down the right sideline and just over the top of Stanton. And a punting scenario for the Lopers. Well, they've tried to take him deep a couple of times. Uh, Northwest Missouri's got some real talent out at corner and it's been difficult for the Lopers to actually just run past them. Um, you know, that one looked like maybe Zorian got held a little bit, but again, consistently, the referees in the MIAA don't usually call that. Hunter Krause, a spiraling high kick. This is a monster taken from the 13-yard line by Griffin, and he's cut down right away. The Lopers coverage unit led by Jerome Houston doesn't allow a return, and Krause flips the field. That's a 53-yard punt. That was a great job by Jerome Houston, but the first person down did a great job of making the return man start and stop, and that's what you try to coach your uh, coverage guys to do, get that return guy so he doesn't get a quick run going. Griffin can be explosive in that role, wasn't allowed to there. Starting at their own 14, a handoff to the left side, turning the co corner and getting a good Jayden six Brady on first carry. down is Jaden Brady. Tackle for UNK by number 22, Trey O'Gee. Brady runs really hard. He runs behind his pads and he's Jayden a load to bring down. down. On the year, Brady came in with just 10 carries for 41 yards, but has a few of them today including that six-yarder a moment ago. Switch out footballs before the second down and four snap. Got to get some good pigskin in there. <laughs> That's the second time now the, the previous offensive series that I think UNK had to switch out the football, so. Just got that sidearm effort through to Jamar Moya. Thought the line was going to get another deflection. Instead, it's completed for a 10-yard gain and a first down. Good job by Hohensee at changing his arm angle there and delivering a pretty good pass. 
uh, a lot of times those turtle screens like that, if they if the quarterback tries to come over the top, those things get knocked down. Right in the middle of the field. Two wide receivers on either side. The draw play. And getting a good push. The handoffs have been effective for Northwest Missouri State. Maybe more so than the passing game. Yeah, they've done a pretty good job of mixing things up, but the running straight up between the tackles has been pretty effective so far. Second down, three. Northwest, before that snap, 13 carries for 90 yards. Through the air, they were just six for 13 for 57 yards. Blitz coming for the Lopers. The run goes right up the middle, and Moya charges forward for a first down and a gain of eight. Jamar Moya with the carry. Yeah, they're starting to impose their will a little bit between the guards here, uh, running a lot of uh, A-gap plays uh, between the center and guard, and it's been pretty effective. The top defensive line unit is out there. The Lopers do rotate them frequently, but it's Spees, Helmuth, and Ben Israel currently. Trying to slow down the rushing attack. Hoensee repositions one of his backs, now sends Moya to the right side. Throws to Moya, he has the grab. That was a nifty looking play. Moya started lined up in the left slot, but into the backfield, motioned out, and they threw it to him on the right side. A lot of moving parts there by the Northwest offense. That's tough on the defense to try to figure out what the heck is is uh, who's coming out of the backfield and who's getting the football. Trey O'Gean eventually made the stop after a nine yard gain for the Bearcats, setting up second and one. Play action, Hohensee hits his safety valve and can't escape the tackle. Willie Fair comes up to bring down Jaden Brady, but that still is, gets the one yard it needed. Nothing more than that. It really appears that Hohensee is more comfortable throwing short passes, especially to his backs out of the backfield. That's been kind of their uh, M.O. so far in the game. They've thrown the ball down the field a little bit, but not with much success. Averaging 5.9 yards per play, but not much more than that. Hohensee has to Humble eat it there. The Couldn't Hohensee. handle the snap, and Atoa Fox was Number breathing down his neck. That, uh, that snap was right there. It was a little bit to the side, but Hohensee should have corralled that. that was, uh, that's all on him, I believe. Good look there on your instant replay. Brought to you by Tom Dinsdale Auto, Grand Island's premier dealership. So after the loss, it's back into Bearcat territory at the 48. Second down and 22. That cost the Bearcats 12 yards. Brady to the left of Hohensee, and before the snap, a timeout taken by Northwest Missouri State. We'll take a break as well. There's six minutes and 19 seconds left in the first half on the Aurora Cooperative scoreboard. Have you ever wondered what's behind the doors of Valley Vet Fashion Direct in Marysville? See, this isn't just a vet supply store. They carry a large selection of all kinds of boots, work, fashion, or casual for all ages. Make sure you check out the sales selection to steal a deal. Perfect your look with a variety of jeans, shirts, and accessories. And if you can't find your size in the store, chances are they have it in their huge warehouse. Valley Vet, Fashion Direct on Highway 36 in Marysville. Open seven days a week. to your auto partner. There is no house divided when you choose Woodhouse. 18 brands, one team, a winning experience every time.
Well, just what we expected, Scott, a competitive game, but not what we expected. UNK is throwing it all over the yard, and Northwest is handing the football off and running it with the quarterback. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's a little contrary to what I was expecting on, uh, during the week getting ready for this game. Bearcats come out of the timeout with five wide on second down and 22. I would look for some kind of a tunnel screen or they're going to take the ball down the field here. Three-man rush. There's a spy. Nutter is spying and running forward now. It's completed to the outside and a nice gain nearly back to the original line of scrimmage. 11 yards to Keegan Sturdy. And Hoensee wasn't going to have much longer to hold on to that football. No, he, uh, and UNK had a chance to knock that down. If it gets knocked down by a, uh, Gabe Amagetcher, they're going to be in third and real long. Third down and 13. Hohensee again alone in the shotgun. Stands in the pocket and throws too high. Had Kashawn Griffin in the middle of the field. Had it over his head by a few yards and a punting situation for the Bearcats. Good pressure by Tell Spees, who you would expect to uh, show up on those types of situations. He can kind of tee off on the offensive line and make his presence felt for sure. Griffin might have felt some pressure coming in from the side as well. Kind of an awkward leap going for that football. Good stop by UNK. Here's the Hoensee kick. It hangs up there. Fox wants the fair catch and makes it at his knees at the 14-yard line. He'll give him the 13. So the Lopers offense heads out, leading by three, with 5.33 remaining on the Midway CDJ scoreboard in the first half. It will really be beneficial if UNK can put a drive together here and take some time off the clock. Obviously, a score would be huge, but more importantly, you want to try to flip the field a little bit and take some of that clock off. Plenty of time to go before halftime, but to just put it in your head strategy-wise, Northwest will get the football to start the third quarter. Davis claps and gets the ball. On the run pass option, he tucks it. And I don't that's a TFL. He maybe just got back to the line of scrimmage is all. Yeah, good pursuit by Northwest Missouri's defense on that. Damian Kearns was out there as the protector. It looked okay. like he wanted to throw, but only one route on that side of the field to look at. Right. I, I thought it was probably an intentional quarterback sweep play, but I thought from here he maybe picked up a couple more yards. Good play by the defense. Hand off. Kearns cuts up field to the 19. Good journey of six yards, makes it third down and much more manageable, third down and six. Oh, they only say third down and four, excuse me. Good run by Damian Kearns there. He hit that thing north and south. Of course, that's what he does, and uh, he's hard to bring down one-on-one. -on -one. Northwest Missouri State's defense allows just 32 rushing yards per game, UNK now at 43 here in the first half. And just like the Bearcats did, UNK uses a timeout on the offensive side. With 4.17 remaining in the first half, the Lopers face third down and four when we return to Cope Stadium. Good afternoon, everyone. We're here at the grill waiting for the flip. He has a great hot lie here on the grill. Looks like he is going with the tongs here, Jim. A great choice. Timing is everything. Nailed it! A flip for the ages. What a flip. Perfect marks. I'd take a slice out of that one. Certified Piedmontese. Real Nebraska beef. So tender and dripping in flavor, you won't believe a steak this good can be shipped right to your front door. NCN Sports is sponsored by Certified Piedmontese Beef. Schaefer's, we're more than just TVs and appliances. And by Nebraska Orthopedic Center, your healing destination.
Third down and four. Backed up inside of their own 20. The Lopers trying to get a first down and keep this drive moving as we near the end of half number one. Nelson motioning left to right. Davis, the All-American quarterback, steps up in the pocket and loses the football. The Bearcats pick it up and return it back inside the five-yard line. And Davis is still down at the nine-yard line. Catastrophe for Nebraska Kearney. Howard got there, combining with Graves. The ball was picked up by Jake Fisher, the sophomore from Smithville, Missouri, and he returned it all the way to the three-yard line. Well, More importantly, perhaps, is T.J. Davis, who's down on his knees. Right. Yeah, it looks like he kind of got uh, crumpled over there a little bit, maybe put a little stress on his neck. A worst case scenario for Nebraska Kearney. The reigning conference offensive player of the year goes down with injury, loses the football, and the Bearcats have it at the Lopers three. Huge shift in momentum for the Bearcats there. Um, you know, you would hope that uh, at the very minimum, UNK uh, has to punt and, and get the field flip. And now Northwest, of course, has first and goal on the three-yard line. UNK's defense will defend until there's no blades of grass behind them. That's, That's their true. motto. See if they can come up with a stand here. Right up the middle, Harris, and he's in with ease. One play, one score. The Bearcats take advantage of the turnover to take their first lead. 13 to 10. See this one again. Big hole. And the fans there are barking, wanting a penalty. I didn't see what they were trying to get. Yeah, I didn't see that get. either, Michael. And the extra point is true. A huge momentum swing with four minutes left in the first half. The UNK offense will TJ Davis lead them back out on the field when we return. Creep, crawl, or fly into Tom Dinsdale CDJR for frightfully good rates and rebates during Ram Power Days. Scare up 0% financing for 48 months, plus a $3,000 rebate on all 2022 Ram 1500 Bighorns. Or sink your fangs into 0% for 48 months, plus a $1,000 rebate on all 2022 Dodge Durango GT Plus all-wheel drives. It's a howling good time during Ram Power Days at Tom Dinsdale CDJR. Seeing that play again. And maybe wanted a celebration. I, I truly didn't see what the argument was there for a flag. Josh Lynn, the head coach for the Lopers, must have seen it, in addition to the fans next to our end zone camera, because Josh was in the ear of the ref. Yeah, there must have been something that happened after that play that uh, the fans thought was not legal. and. Obviously, Josh is thinking the same thing. But a huge shift in this football game. That as big of a play as you could have. A strip sack of T.J. Davis. And they return it about six, seven yards there to three. One play in. And the Bearcats, the perennial power of this Mid-America Conference, now in front by four. Yeah, and, you know, I think it's critical that UNK is able to do something with this football. Jackson bounces off the first tackle, brought down harshly at the 27. And the reason I say that is that Northwest Missouri is going to get the ball back right after the second half. So if UNK can do something to maybe get some points on the board and salvage a little bit, that will certainly help the cause. brings the ball to the UNK 27 yard line. Here comes the offense. And led by T.J. Davis, the 6'3", 180-pound senior. Staying in the game, he was looked at closely. 
might have been kind of glancing at the shoulder neck area, the training staff, but he appears to be all right. And he's running on first down. Option pitch. And Jackson, they grabbed his leg along the outside, but the Floridian is up to the 35 for an eight-yard gain. That's good to see TJ come back and make a play like that because it shows that he's uh, okay to go. And clearly said TJ's good when you send him running on first down. Yep. Now second down and a yard. Two backs with Davis in the backfield. Stacked wide receivers to his left. Hand off to the outside. Jackson waiting. Now he gets the edge. Montrez Jackson into Bearcat territory. What a block by Jerquan Connors to help protect him. Yeah, that was a great job by Jerquan setting up that defensive back and just knowing when to get him. And he did a great job at, at pinning him inside. And Kearns was out there. Also Joe stiffened with the blocks and the rest was Jackson's speed to the 42. Now they're running right. Davis still holding, finally pitches to Kearns. Another great job by the perimeter blocking out there by Jerquan Kearns. That's an excellent job. And we talk about it every home game, I think, when the option is run. But Davis is as good as there is at holding the football and making the defense commit to him before tossing it back. Yeah, he was really patient on that last play and, and held on to it. Uh, and made a late pitch that was able to free up Damien a little bit. Nine yard rush, a 22 yard rush, and a six yard rush. That's Loper football. Now Davis cuts inside, wrapped up nicely on the play by Isaac Volstead. The Iowa City native has had his name called often here in the first half. Really strong play to hold Davis to no gain, forcing third and four. Third down, four, you and Kane. Twenty seconds on the play clock. They could run that down as far as they want before this third down snap. Low snap. Davis handles it. Running out of time. Throws to the right. It's cut at the 14-yard line. Jaquan Connors making it. Oh, it's A.J. McPhee, 81. Yeah, A.J. McPhee, sorry. Keaton Claiborne delivered the blow on Davis, and he delivered the football downfield. McPhee had the touchdown grab earlier and hauled in that huge third down conversion. Great play call by the coach Thatcher there. He was able to get... Uh, uh, the receiver opened to the right coverage, and D TJ delivered another great pass. On play action, Davis reverses course. Now dips up field, brought down from behind after getting three yards to the between the 12 and the 13 yard lines. So far, this has been an excellent answer by the Loper offense after that turnover. Three, second down, seven. Two timeouts for UNK and Northwest. So the Lopers not too pressured by the 45 seconds on the clock. Davis has a seam, and Davis has the score. A 12-yard rushing touchdown for TJ Davis. Puts the Lopers back in front with under a minute to go in the first half. What a great job by the receivers and the running backs by you and Kay at getting those perimeter blocks again. Kearns had the one that sprung it, and Davis with the patient run. He still had the speed to beat the backer to the outside, but didn't overrun the play. Just a great job by the UNK offense answering after that turnover. Gonzalez for the extra points. And it's through the uprights. A three point lead again for UNK, the perfect offense with the answer. 
Claybaugh Pharmacy provides you with all the pharmacy options a person would need. As a full service pharmacy, we give you all the traditional options, but also have the modern technology to maintain your profiles. Maybe you're busy, head to claybaughpharmacy.com. Click on online refills to get your prescriptions filled from the convenience of your home. Claybaugh Pharmacy and Gift Shop, your hometown family owned pharmacy. Well, I said the perfect offense, meant to say perfect answer by the offense, but really that is what the UNK offense is supposed to look like. They run to set up the pass and then let their star QB work. That's exactly what happened on that 73-yard touchdown drive. Yeah, Coach Thatcher mixed it up. The, he brought back the option a little bit and was able to get some good runs and then uh, hit a big pass by Jer uh, to Jaquan Con excuse me, A.J. McPhee, to set up that touchdown. Good return by Jaden Brady. Thought he would be down around the 20. Got it out to the 27. 29 seconds and two timeouts for Northwest Missouri State to work with. It'll be interesting to see what they do. My guess is they're going to take a shot fairly early to see if they can get some yards. Otherwise, they might just be content to get into the half. Braden Wright's in a quarterback now. Nebraska native, senior out of Elkhorn South. Just a 50% completion percentage on the season, and he runs on first down, gets a first down, and pushed out on the other side of the 40. So Wright flashes his speed. He'd run for 134 yards coming into this game. 13-yard gash, that snap. And it only right, took six the seconds. The yard line. First down, 10, Bearcats. Yeah, if you're UNK, you want to keep everything in front of you here and make them go the distance here. You don't want them to be able to kick a field goal right before the half. It will would be on the opposite side of the field from the two misses from Hamill. Make that Lamel. Here's Wright dropping back this time. Throws deep and has it. The seam route to the tight end, Hembro. And Northwest not wasting any time to get to the Loper 40. That one goes for 20 yards. Bearcats call the timeout. We'll see this play again. And Braden Wright, he's been playing for the Bearcats for a while. He played back in 2019 here at Cope Stadium when the Lopers pulled off the upset and one of the biggest wins in program history. He was playing then. Boston's job to Hoensee, but getting some snaps still. Yeah, I don't know if Hoensee's nicked up or if they just want to give Braden some reps, but uh, he delivered a great throw there and uh, before that had a good run. So obviously he's shown some ability. Just 54 for 115 coming into this game. Four interceptions, one touchdown. So the numbers don't scream at you, but situationally it's working out for the Bearcats. Yeah, UNK needs to, to get a stop here. They don't want to get into a, a situation where, uh, again, Northwest Missouri has momentum after a score and get the ball right away to start the third quarter. Again, Lamel, a good kicker on the season with a long of 46, but has struggled to find the mark today. Three wide on the left side. The deep ball from right is too long. Right Trying to find complete. Jamar Moya, covered up by Jamar Darius Moya. Swanson. For you and yeah, Darius, Darius had him covered up pretty good. That would have been a tough catch by the receiver. Still one timeout for Northwest Missouri State. 11 seconds. So at least two plays, you'd think. Yeah, I would think they have to take a throw here and uh, maybe try to get 15 yards to try to set up an, a field goal. Just a three-man, no, four-man rush. 
And errant pass. Shelton on the crossing route. And that was a bullet. Too far in front of him. Really had him now. Yeah, he did. He just misfired, I think. That, uh, that must be Braden's issue. So it'll be interesting to see what Northwest does here. They're probably not in field goal range, and there's not right much now, time. Yeah, this would be about a 56, 57 yard field goal try into the wind. It's, it's more of a diagonal wind from right to left as we view it. Get a great look at the full stands, standing room today. That that stadium's full. Love to yeah, see it. Great to see, and especially, you know, Nebraska's playing on TV right now in a big game, so it's good to see the local fans come out and support the team. A 6-2 and two group, it's homecoming. Beautiful day, great atmosphere for football, and this would charge up the crowd if they can get a stop here with six seconds left in the half. This drive really started promising for Northwest Missouri State. Big run by Wright, then the 20-yard completion. But since then, a couple of incompletions, meaning it might be Hail Mary time. Yeah, I would think that might be what's coming. Uh, UNK's got three players defending the end zone. So um, I think that's probably what they'll do is take a shot. Right, running out of time, and he's ripped down. The three-man rush gets home. It's a brilliant rush by that UNK defensive line. Isaac Soper out of Wyoming, Iowa. The 280-pound sophomore gets the sack at an exclamation point on the end of the first half that shows the Lopers heading into the breakup three. Yeah, the UNK, you know, after that turnover and it looked like a potential injury for DJ Davis, gave up a quick score, and they showed a ton of resilience coming down the field and punching one in the end zone to take the lead back and then, uh, you know, making a couple of big plays there at the end of the half. All the Lopers getting back in front by three. Be sure to stick around for halftime. We have lots to talk about. It's homecoming after all. We'll talk about the king and the queen. We'll talk about the Hall of Fame inductions, plus the man, the myth, the legend, Sarge, the strength coach for Nebraska Kearney. He is the subject of our game day feature. We'll have two and a half minute segment on the man that gets the team stronger, bigger, and faster. That's all coming up in your 98.9 The Vibe Halftime Show next. The Halftime Show is brought to you by the new 98.9 The Vibe, the Tri-Cities greatest hits. From small businesses to families, farmers, and more, we're here to serve our fellow friends and neighbors. Your community is our community. Your goals are our goals. We've increased our footprint and expanded our service and dedication to you, our valued customers. Things may look a little different now, but our values and commitment remain the same. Without you, we wouldn't be here three decades later. Whether we're talking commercial or residential plumbing, Lamo Plumbing is the place you call. Lamo provides 24-hour emergency service as well. Call them if you get in a tight spot. And as for their retail items, well, you got to check out some of their faucets, some of their kitchen items, and some of their bathroom items like their onyx showers. And hey, say you've got a digging job, you call Lamo Plumbing for that too. They've added a full-time crew for you, doing backhoe, trenching, and sewer work. Take that digging job off your list and have Lamo do it for you. That's Lamo Plumbing in Beatrice, now at their new location on North 7th Street in Beatrice. If you're thinking about becoming a John Deere technician, receive a debt-free degree from Landmark Implement. With the John Deere Student Tech Program, receive reimbursement for up to 100% of college tuition, fees, books, and room and board, plus a $5,000 tool stipend. Students are paid a competitive hourly wage for their work hours and are guaranteed employment at a Landmark location after graduation. Visit Landmark.Careers to find out more about the John Deere Student Tech Program and become part of the Landmark difference. The new 98.9 The Vibe is the soundtrack of your generation. The 
Tri-Cities greatest hits are on 98.9 FM. 98.9, The Vibe. Get more than you expect at Furniture Direct. We have furniture for every part of your home at great prices. But that is what you expect. You might not expect how much we have or the selection from trusted brands. We also offer express delivery and a 30-day comfort trial on any new mattress set. Get more than you expect at your locally owned Furniture and Mattress Direct, online and in Hastings, behind Sonic on South Burlington. <laughs> that is literally the funniest thing ever. And then I said... <laughs> it wasn't, but this guy could use a win. Even if it's not as big of a win as I get with free Kasasa cash checking. Kasasa cash pays me a really high rate and refunds ATM withdrawal fees nationwide. So I feel like a queen. Has a mega bank ever made you feel that way? Or is it more like this guy? Take back banking with Kasasa cash. Get Kasasa checking at Liberty First Credit Union. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. At first, I was really nervous and intimidated to buy a ring. My experience at Starter Hamel was very easy. I felt like I walked out with the ring that was going to make her go wow and say yes. I love my ring. It is so beautiful. I get compliments on it all the time. I always tell them Starter Heyman. I love it. Yeah, we would definitely recommend Starter Heyman. We're definitely, definitely coming, coming back. back. <laughs> sure. We have a wedding band to buy. So. We do, yes. We have a wedding <laughs> band, so we'll be back for that. Starter Heyman Jewelers, downtown 12th and O, South Point Pavilions, and Grand Island. NCN Sports is brought to you by Cunningham's on the Lake and Cunningham's on the Bricks, located in Kearney. Check out our Twitter page and follow us on Twitter, at NCN Sports. Exciting news from Eye Care Associates of Columbus. We are now working together with clinics in Norfolk and Grand Island to form Unity Eye Centers. Yes, it's a new name, but what does it mean for you? Joining together allows us to deliver and share state-of-the-art technology and provide a higher level of care for every patient. Best of all, it's still the same owners and you'll see the same welcoming faces. At Unity Eye Centers, we want to continue to be your eye doctor of choice. Come see the difference that quality eye care can deliver. As the world keeps changing, so is the way to purchase a new car. Across the nation, there are lengthy delays with new vehicle requests and many being built to order. At Zollner Ford of Beatrice, we're making it easy. With our new Save a Spot program, you can be one of the first in line. We've got a seamless pre-order process that guarantees your reservation is secure and in the queue. And our sales professionals will keep you updated every step of the way on the status of your vehicle. Come reserve yours today. Zollner Ford of Beatrice. Michael Shively and Scott Hoffman with you here at Cope Stadium at the University of Nebraska Kearney. The score at halftime, UNK 17, Northwest Missouri State 14. Battle of a couple of teams who need to win to stay into playoff contention, and it's been a fun one so far. Let's dive right into your halftime highlights, which are sponsored by Sarder Heyman Jewelers. Stop into their Lincoln or Grand Island locations to help your jewelry dreams come true. UNK gets on the board first. That was a third down pass play, and A.J. McPhee hauls in his second scoring catch of the season. But Northwest Missouri State, thanks to a run against the kicker penalty, gets to extend its drive and find seven points. Then Junior Gonzalez from 45 yards out nailed it. That would have been good from almost 55. Yeah. <laughs> now T.J. Davis trying to get back into this, but instead loses the football. He's double teamed on that sack, and it was getting up gingerly. No trouble for Northwest Missouri State. They are able to plunge that in from three yards out with Jay Harris, and the momentum seems to have flipped 14-10. Bearcats in front, and is the quarterback injured? 
No, Davis comes back out, leads the seven-play, 73-yard drive, and finishes it off with a brilliant 13-yard touchdown run and the momentum squarely back on the side of the home team heading into the locker rooms. Ooh, lots to digest there, but that was an entertaining, exciting first half, and if you're UNK, I think you're content with how it played out. Definitely. I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't want to hammer on it too much, but after that strip sack and touchdown by Northwest Missouri, uh, things could have easily just devolved into negative for the Lopers. And for them to come back and get a decent kickoff return and a couple of runs and a pass completion and punch one in uh, is, is huge, speaks a lot to the resiliency of the Lopers. Your halftime also sponsored in part by certified Piedmontese beef, Italian heritage breed, Nebraska raised perfection, lean, tender, and delicious. You can get it shipped right to your doorstep anywhere in the country. That's exactly what happened for all of us, the News Channel Nebraska broadcast team, TV, radio, whoever it was, the folks at certified Piedmontese generous enough to ship us all some beef we got to try it out let me tell you it is for real you can taste the difference in that grass-fed beef it's healthy powerful nutrition to play at your best you can order at cpbeef.com lots to come as we continue this 98.9 the vibe halftime show the band on the field now but soon They'll recognize those Lopers getting inducted into the Athletics Hall of Fame. Also, the homecoming king and queen will break down halftime stats and have our game day feature on Sarge, the director of sports performance for Nebraska Kearney. That's all coming up here at halftime on NCN. It all started long ago with cattle in mind, and it's still the major focus today of Powder River Livestock Handling Equipment and your friends at Valley Vet Supply in Marysville. They want to provide you with the best equipment. That's why they sell Powder River. It truly does stand the test of time. Powder River is a name you can trust. From cattle handling systems to gates and feeders, Powder River makes equipment for life. Come see for yourself at Valley Vet Supply on Highway 36 in Marysville. <laughs> that is literally the funniest thing ever. And then I said. <laughs> it wasn't. But this guy could use a win. Even if it's not as big of a win as I get with free Kasasa Cash checking. Kasasa Cash pays me a really high rate and refunds ATM withdrawal fees nationwide. So I feel like a queen. Has a mega bank ever made you feel that way? Or is it more like this guy? Take back banking with Kasasa Cash. Get Kasasa checking at Liberty First Credit Union. The sun has yet to rise outside of the Health and Sports Center, but there's no shortage of energy inside. Energy. That's thanks to the man they call Sarge. Yeah! It's contagious! UNK's Director of Sports Performance, Steve Schultz, has been working as a strength coach for 45 years and has carried the nickname nearly that whole time. The athletes didn't really like all the demands that I put on them, so that's how I got my name, Sarge. They thought I was a drill sergeant. Smooth that out. Just think, bring those, those hips right between your heels. The name was born during his first team meeting as the first full-time strength coach at Stanford. After working with the likes of John Elway and Ed McCaffrey, he moved on to Santa Clara and then Boise State before the York, Nebraska native felt the call of the Cornhusker State. When I moved to Boise, it was kind of like, oh, okay, this is nice, it's kind of like Nebraska. And then when the uh, job in Hastings opened up, I thought, well, I moved to Boise because it was like Nebraska. Why don't I just move to Nebraska? Because it's actually Nebraska, you know. Sarge spent three years at Hastings College before moving north to UNK in late 2016, just as Josh Lynn was taking over the football program. The new head coach tried to meet his new players during a lifting session. Sarge asked him to do that later. You know, I thought to myself, I was like, man, that's probably the guy we need to be leading our, our strength program. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Make that 315 look like 135. Well, that's energy all the time, and it's business all the time. And there's a good balance of both. And he's, he's one of the best I've ever seen at getting people to get going and also educating them at the, at the same time. Come on, baby. <laughs> 
But after more than four decades in charge of college weight rooms, Sarge will retire at the end of the year. Oh. Oh. Trying to be a cheerleader all the time and you know, you just get kind of worn out a little bit. And I, and I think this is just a good time to step away. Let some of the younger strength coaches come up. Finish it up, grab some protein. He's leaving proud of his strength coaching legacy. Really try to give it my all and, and uh, do the best job I can, bring, bring the energy every day. You know, that's kind of my motto. So. The Lopers could still see Sarge around. He might continue to work with a couple of teams. Hey, last two sets. In Kearney, last Michael Shively, News Channel, start. Nebraska. Beat the Black Friday rush this year at Ashley. Shop early and save on this season's top gifts and guest essentials up to 40% off. Plus, find a financing option to fit any budget, including up to 60 months. These deals are for a limited time and are only at America's number one furniture and mattress store, Ashley. Schedule your delivery by visiting your local Ashley store or shop online today. So, 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 so let's go. A new year, a fresh start, a resolution to grow more, gain more, give more. The process is the same, plant, grow, harvest, but the way you do it is always evolving. And so are we, Aurora Cooperative. Grow, gain, give, Aurora and you. NCN Sports is brought to you by Currency. If your business needs help financing big ticket items, visit GoCurrency.com for details. And by Custom Sports. Represent your school and look good doing it with Custom Sports. Good afternoon, everyone. We're here at the grill waiting for the flip. He has a great hot lie here on the grill. Looks like he is going with the tongs here, Jim. A great choice. Timing is everything. Nailed it! A flip for the ages. What a flip! Perfect marks. I'd take a slice out of that one. Certified Piedmontese. Real Nebraska beef. So tender and dripping in flavor, you won't believe a steak this good can be shipped right to your front door. And a minor and international study. Homecoming festivities in full swing here at Foster Field at Cope Stadium. Now, Michael Shively, Scott Hoffman with you. Neither of us are the homecoming king or queen. <laughs> Those two are Aiden Widener of Humphrey and Aspen Libby of Columbus. So congratulations to them and all of the uh, homecoming court candidates. Posing with Mark Bauer, the activities director on the left, to Doug Christensen, the chancellor on the right. Columbus well represented. There were triplet Columbus girls that are in the court. So uh, uh, Discoverers and, and company uh, well represented in the homecoming court here uh, today and in the making me feel a little old category i know how to pronounce aspen's last name spelled l-u-e-b-b-e -E, pronounced libby because i covered her at state golf her junior year of high school and she's not supposed to be able to be a senior in college yet but i suppose that's how that happens trust me michael that happens quite frequently when you're my age so <laughs> widener a junior majoring in elementary education minors in special education and and coaching, volunteers in elementary schools, and leads a youth group. Libby is a senior majoring in exercise science, minor, minoring in health science and pre-physical therapy. She is a member of Alpha Phi. So congratulations to all of the homecoming court. Turning our attention back to football, some stats that stick out here at halftime, Scott, in this 17 to 14 Nebraska Kearney advantage over Northwest Missouri State. Uh, the, the yardage in favor of UNK, 228 to 198. Northwest has run four more plays. Nothing too crazy in in the numbers through the first half. Not really. I, I kind of thought this would be an evenly matched game. I guess the, the biggest thing that stands out to me is how both offenses have 
come out and done some things a little bit different than what I expected. You and Kay came out throwing the football, and it's been pretty effective. And it actually is, uh, they've actually been able to use that to set up the run, which is contrary to what usually happens for the Lopers. Of note, Northwest two of seven on third down. Those two third down conversions came on their first drive. Since then, haven't been able to convert on one of those. That's a feather in the cap of the Nebraska Kearney defense. I I would agree 100% with you, and that's kind of been the M.O. for Northwest this year. They've struggled a little bit converting third downs, and uh, that could be why they've struggled from time to time. So the homecoming court finished. Up next, the Hall of Fame will step aside. When we return to Cope Stadium at halftime, we'll tell you who's going into the Athletic Hall of Fame here at UNK. At Midway GM and Kearney, get 0% APR financing on most GMC Sierras, Acadias, Yukons, and more. We are professional grade at Central Nebraska's premier GM dealer. Midway Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, and Kearney, or think midway.com slash GM. From the moment something didn't feel quite right, to that ambulance arriving at your door, from the immediate diagnosis, to the surgery that followed, to the long list of lifestyle changes and that family gathering that everyone always talked about but for whatever reason kept getting postponed. To the moment you sat back and realized how grateful you are for everything you have. We've been here for you, just around the corner. The athletic director and chancellor staying out on the field. They're standing next to Bill Backus, a 1967 graduate football player and track and field athlete. One of five athletes being inducted into the UNK Athletic Hall of Fame along with one coach. So Bill Backus, the first. That is track and field athlete Shauna Graham, formerly Shauna Bircher, 2006 graduate. Pretty Soon we'll see Dusty Jura. He was a great Mets basketball player. We will see diver Dusty Hat, formerly Dusty Walston. Football player Troy Stanachik, an 86 graduate, and head football coach Daryl Morris. So I know you know lots of the names I just mentioned, Scott. I'll let you have the floor to tell us a little bit about some of these folks. Well, Dusty Jura, uh, when I first came back in 2010, he was actually a graduate assistant for the basketball team, but uh, just did a fantastic job as a player, and uh, he's just a great addition to the local Hall of Fame. Uh, Troy Stanachek, I was fortunate enough to be on the coaching staff while Troy played. Got a tryout with the St. Louis Cardinals at that time. He was just a fantastic player, had unbelievable athletic ability, and just a great person. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, Daryl Morris and I have quite a history. We worked together. I came in 1984, he came in 86, and we worked together for 10 years. We were roommates on the road. I was in his wedding. Uh, and then he hired me back to be the receivers coach in 2010. So we have a long history and uh, good friends. So I couldn't be happier for this group of people. There's Dusty Jura. So talking a little bit about the football players as this is the football game. Backus, a Columbus native, helped the football team win three straight Nebraska College Conference titles. Part of the 63 squad that made the NAIA play playoffs was ranked in the top five nationally. He was a special teams guy, punt and kick returner, also averaged six and a half yards per carry. That will play. Stanacek, one of the best defensive linemen in school history, one of only eight lopers at that position to earn first or second team All-American honors. He's from Pierce, Nebraska. The Blue Jays are the two seed in the state playoffs this season. Three-year letter winner, five-year team member, part of teams that won 25 games and two conference titles. Currently a senior oncology account manager, lives in Lincoln. So that is 
Troy Stanachek and just getting announced now, Daryl Morris, the head football coach between 2000 and 2014 after being an assistant for 13 years, a Loper lifer, Tampa native, part of the transition from Kearney State to UNK, from NAIA to Division II, first an independent, then in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, and then to the MIAA, one of three Loper head football coaches to reach 100 career wins, 101 and 63. That's a 615 winning percentage, four outright or shared conference titles, four playoff appearances, 02, 05, 09, 2011, and had multiple double digit winning seasons. And I, I think people probably underestimated that conference transition to the MIAA and and Coach Morris was undermanned in terms of scholarships coming into the new conference and that led to a transition at his coaching spot but clearly still admired and loved here in the Kearney area. Yeah, when when I came back in 2010, of course we were in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference and we're doing extremely well. We made uh, the playoffs in 2011, uh, but we entered the uh, MIAA. I think we only had 18 equivalent scholarships, mm. and of course now UNK has uh, pretty close to the to the maximum of 36. Uh, Daryl was instrumental in starting the the Blue Gold Football Banquet that uh, now raises about $300,000 a year. The first year we did it, we raised 80000 and now it's up to about $300,000 a year. So he's done a great job. He's a good member of the community and a good member of UNK's Hall of Fame. Congratulations to all of the inductees to the UNK Athletics Hall of Fame. The Lopers own a three-point lead over the Northwest Missouri State Bearcats at halftime, the start of the third quarter on the other side on News Channel Nebraska. What does farming mean to you? For most, it's hard work, dedication, and livelihood. Unfortunately, that also comes with risk. At Nebraska Crop Insurance in Beatrice, they know the nonstop dedication involved to keep your family protected from that risk and ensure their livelihood. Not only do they know everything about the coverage you need, they're also farmers themselves, so protect what means the most to you with the agent who knows what it means to be a farmer. Nebraska Crop Insurance, 615 Dorsey Street in Beatrice. When the game wraps up or even before kickoff, our community welcomes you with open arms. The Lincoln Convention and Visitors Bureau is happy to have you here and we want to show you what we're all about. From wide open spaces to music, shopping, entertainment and more, there is always something for you to discover in our city. Stop by the Visitor's Center at 7th and P in the Haymarket or visit Lincoln.org. The Lincoln Convention and Visitors Bureau is a proud supporter of high school athletics. Attention, there is no need to shop around for the lowest cash prescription price. You Save Pharmacy has you covered. When you search on GoodRx, Rx Saver, or Single Care, simply show us the best price listed. If we are not already lower, we will match the lowest price. Offer does not apply on controlled substances. Trust you're getting the lowest price from your local You Save Pharmacy. And of course, the best hometown service. You Save Pharmacy. Thirty minutes of football remaining in regulation, and we expect an exciting brand of football to fill that. A reverse, a fake reverse, and Brady takes it to the right side. I, I thought he handed that off to Kish, yeah. to Kashawn Griffin, kept it, and got out near the thirty-yard line at the twenty-eight. And the Bearcats will take over to start this half. Really good fake. Yeah, I thought he was going to hand the ball there. Eventually, it was the kicker who shoved him out, Kyle Failing, the sophomore from Washington. And who comes out at quarterback? It is Mike Hoensey. So Braden Wright just got that last series uh, there uh, to end out the half. But whether it was just a situational thing or if Hoensey's a little nicked up, the starter is back out there for the Bearcats. Handing off, and Jaden Brady tripped up. That could have been a huge run if not for J.C. Nutter grabbing his ankle and upending him after an eight-yard jump. 
Northwest came out and showed a little bit of an option play there. They actually were reading the defensive end, I think, for the give or the keep. Well, the rushing attack was pretty effective there in the first half for Northwest Missouri State. 96 rushing, make that 102 rushing yards on 19 carries, so just over five yards per tote. They'll go to the ground again to Jaden Brady. He crashes forward for a first down and a gain of six. Tackle for UNK by number 22, <coughs> Trey O'Gean. Trey O'Gean, the safety with the tackle. Brady brings the ball to the Northwest 41 yard line. The Bearcats did have some success running the ball in between the tackles in the first half, so it kind of makes you wonder if they maybe uh, aren't thinking that that's where they're going to try to make things happen this half. The Bearcats, a turnover-prone offense coming into this game, but have avoided that fate so far. Good crossing route, completion to Keegan Sturdy into low per territory. A 14-yard pickup. Tackle for UNK by Terry Three plays Swanson. in the Bearcats moving the football. Two pretty good runs and then a play-action pass off of a Sorry, run fake that gets the defense uh, playing that, uh, that run action. Bearcats coaching staff drawing up a good start to their third quarter opening possession. Hohensi to throw again. Goes the full length of the field sideways to Keegan Sturdy. Ball hung up for a long time. Able to complete it, get a few yards out of it. That's a that's a pretty dangerous throw. I mean, he that has thing that thing has to travel a long ways on a flat trajectory. And um, luckily, UNK's defensive secondary was backing up. Had they been able to play a little tighter, that thing is could have get intercepted. Nine yard gain. Hohensey gives up the middle, reversing course and a smart move. Jimmy Harrison comes from behind to bring down Jamar Moya, the senior running back. Well, just over two minutes into this third quarter and the Bearcats moving the football. Your third quarter is brought to you by Lincoln Convention and Visitors Bureau. Play, visit, meet, and compete at www.lincoln.org. Pretty good offensive series for the Northwest Bearcats so far. No incompletions. All the run plays have worked. Pressure up the middle. Late throw over the middle. Incomplete. Jalen Perkins on the coverage in his first game back after suffering a concussion against Emporia State. Able to rise up and get that deflection. Ball kind of hung up there a little bit on Hohensee. He did have a receiver underneath. He tried to take a shot. Good play by Jalen. Perkins was all over Kashawn Griffin, the junior big play threat out of California. Brings up second and 10. They fake to Brady, it's a screen. Moya, and grabbed his leg. Harrison with the stop. Just two yards, and it's second and eight. Make that third and eight. Northwest has been able to hit that play a couple of times earlier in the first half. It was a good job by you and Kay of recognizing it and stopping it for a two-yard gain. Aranjaque, Helmuth, and Ben Israel, the starting defensive linemen, check back in, hoping to apply a pass rush against Mike Hohensey. The junior from Illinois, adjusting his offensive line with five wide receivers for third and eight. Over the middle, off of the knee of his receiver. The slant route was open, but Rashad Shelton couldn't make the grab. Another good play by Jalen Perkins there. He was right there and knocked the ball away late. Yeah, credit Perkins, he got in on that. And fourth down. Offense is still on the field for Northwest. They've missed a couple of field goals, and this would be about a 47-yarder into the wind. Looks like they may end up taking a timeout. It's down to four seconds. So Coach Rich Wright uses his first timeout of the second half. Four minutes and 15 seconds into the third quarter. A three-point loper lead on News Channel Nebraska.
your auto partner. There is no house divided when you choose Woodhouse. 18 brands, one team, a winning experience every time. Anything for the floor, O Street Carpet has it and more. From little feet to little paws, to updates and overhauls. From soft and cozy to durable and resilient. From something that blends in or something that's different. From DIY to custom install, O Street Carpet can help you with it all. Whatever your needs are for the floor, O Street Carpet has it and more. Coach Rich Wright saying the offense has a better chance to get eight yards than for special teams to make a 47-yarder. They're going for it, fourth down and eight. The ball at the 30 of the Lopers. ONC rolling right, trying to keep the play alive, throws at the last second and broken up. J.C. Nutter had the coverage on Keegan Sturdy, and the Nebraska Kearney defense holds strong on fourth down. Great pressure by the defensive line there, forced him out of the pocket, and J.C. Nutter did a great job of sticking on that running back and knocking the ball away. Well, the UNK defense has been good on fourth down this season. Opponents are now just 6 of 22 on fourth down conversion tries against the Lopers. What can the UNK offense dial up for its first drive of the third? Davis complete. He has McPhee across midfield, still rolling near the 46-yard line. A 30-yard pass completion on the first play of the half for the Loper offense. AJ just ran down the field, set up, and found an opening. Great job by TJ finding him, and that's a big play to start the second half. McPhee now three catches for 64 yards and a touchdown. The Loper passing attack benefiting their team here this afternoon. The run first offense by offensive coordinator Drew Thatcher gives to Damian Kearns. Can't quite Damian slip Kearns free from Sam carrier. Phillips, but gets five on first down. Yeah, it's just like we talked about in pregame, Michael. You know, we said that TJ needed to have a good game throwing the ball, and I didn't expect Coach Thatcher to come out uh, uh, in the air raid offense, but they're doing a great job. They're mixing things up and keeping Northwest defense off balance. Each drive, it's felt like, has had a new wrinkle to it, where they've either brought out the option or the play action or the traditional handoff after not doing it. And now on second and five, Davis rolls right, throws right, and caught in bounds and just short about a yard shy of the first down on the completion to Nelson. Great first catch by Cody, keeping his feet and dragging his feet to stay in. Uh, if TJ could have put a little more velocity behind that, might have had a chance to get that extra yard. Instead, it's third and one. The Bearcats are stacking that defensive line. Five players near it now. Phillips thinking about it at the rover position. Davis rolling to the outside on third and one. Now scrambling for his life. Needs to get rid of the football. Does towards McPhee. And that looked like it skipped on the grass. It did. And fourth down and one. Another aggressive play call. Yeah, and he, had, he had A.J. McPhee open on the uh, play very similar to the one on the first play of the series that uh, A.J. turned into a 30-yard gain. So uh, UNK's in a much similar situation that Northwest was in uh, in the last series. So here you have a fourth and one from about the same spot on the field. Damian Kearns is the running back to the right of Davis. It's a quarterback keeper. When it's right near it, depends on the spot. It doesn't look like he got it. I think he's a little short. The Bearcat defense, so good against the run all season. 
We talked about it all pregame, just 32 <laughs> rushing yards per game. And that run defense holds strong again. This time at fourth down and one. And the Lopers, for the first time this season, did not convert a fourth down try. They were nine for nine before that snap. And that's about the first time all day that they've really just tried to punch one up inside and uh, shows you how stout the Bearcat defense is. Enormous play in this game. While it was a similar scenario in terms of fourth down near the 30, a fourth and one is different than a fourth and eight, and the Lopers couldn't take advantage of it, and they didn't get points on that drive, despite traveling nearly 40 yards. Handoff, good tackle, Atoa Fox stands up Jay Harris for no gain. Jay Harris, the ball carrier. Good pursuit by the Loper defense there. The they were the doing Lopers. a good job of stopping the run. No gain, second down, Chad. Bearcats, big winners a season ago in this matchup in Maryville. Yeah, that was a game reminiscent of the Emporia game that we played a couple of weeks ago. They just Things just didn't work for the Lopers. 66 to 13, the final much different story playing out this I afternoon. Poency rushes for, for four yards and third down Anthony and Horton six. Did not play in 2020 because of that COVID year, but in 2019 they played here in Kearney. And that was the big win by the Lopers, 24 to 17. They had lost the first seven games against Northwest Missouri State since they joined the MIAA. Trying to force a three and out, the Loper defense brings four. Hohen C. Extending the play and picked off J.C. Nutter. The senior steps in front of the pass to force the first turnover of the game for the Loper defense. Great job by the defense there, putting pressure on Hohensey and getting him to flush out of the pocket. He made a poor choice on that. Great job by J.C. Again, second straight series, making a big play. Thedford, Nebraska native, coming up with the big pick. That's his first interception of the season. Second leading tackler. Came into tonight or this afternoon with 64 tackles, five and a half for a loss. And good to see the former Sandhills Thedford quarterback come up with the huge play. Uh, he was a do all uh, athlete for the Sandhills Thedford team. Yeah, the Knights, uh, that's really when they came onto the eight man scene. Davis keeps after faking to the back and. Maybe didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and just beyond 10 from their own 46 for the Lopers. Yeah, Northwest run defense is starting to show, uh, show up a little bit. UNK busted out a couple of trick plays in the first half. Neither were successful. I don't know if they have a whole lot left in their <laughs> trick play bag. First half number two. Montrez Jackson is in the backfield. Joe stiffened in motion. Davis, the quick pass. Zorian Stanton hauls it in, makes a man miss, and dives forward for the first down. An 11 12 yard pickup for Zorian Stanton. Good job by Zorian avoiding that tackle and getting the first down. His second first down catch had a three yard grab earlier to get the necessary yardage to move the chains. Lopers get to the Line of scrimmage in a hurry. Now glance back to the sideline with Jackson and Kearns both in the backfield. To the short side, the toss to Kearns. Kearns cuts up and brought down at the 30. That's a first down rush. Good block by Montrez Jackson out on the perimeter again. See it again on your Tom Dinsdale Instant replay, 12-yard carry for Kearns. That's good for a first national bank. 
First Plus, they pulled Hunter Push out. Uh, that's a little wrinkle that they'll show. They'll arc him out onto the secondary player and leave the tackle unblocked. And it showed up there for a pretty good play. That's the left tackle heading out that way. Delayed handoff. Kearns finds a hole, and Damian Kearns off to the races. A 30-yard touchdown run. And the Lopers are up a couple of scores. Another new little wrinkle for the Lopers there. They pulled the backside guard, something that they don't do a whole lot of on just straight hand up plays. Oh, the C part. Of, once he got through that first line where the wide receivers were holding their blocks, nobody was home in the secondary for the Bearcats. The third rushing touchdown of the season for Damian Kearns. Gonzalez on to try to make it a 10-point lead. And it's throw. A double-digit advantage with 6.24 left in the third quarter on the Midway CDJ scoreboard. NCN Sports is sponsored by Certified Piedmontese Beef, Schaefer's, we're more than just TVs and appliances, and by Nebraska Orthopedic Center, your healing destination. Women have a 1 in 8 chance for developing breast cancer. Early detection makes a difference. Beatrice Community Hospital's Imaging Center can help with the latest technology, from screening with 3D mammography, breast MRI, breast ultrasound, and breast biopsy. All services conveniently located in the BCH's Imaging Center. Schedule your screening today. Incredible care, incredibly close. We'll see that touchdown again. A little bit of a counter, maybe kind of a delay. Play. And it, we credited the wide receivers, but it really was the offensive line out there making the blocks. Will Brenston. Oh, pardon me, I was looking at the Northwest roster, excuse me. Hunter Push out there. He had one of, he was one of the two guys with the big blocks to create the crease for Damian Kearns. Great answer by UNK. Yeah, UNK. Faced with third and down on that, uh, just, just three back. plays into that drive, and it was third and long. I don't remember the exact yardage, right. but that was a huge conversion on that play, and then the offense glided the rest of the way. It was just a four-play scoring drive, 54 yards. And there's a touchback. Now the pressure put on the Bearcats. This is a program that hasn't been in too many of these situations in the regular season over the last few decades. No. This year they have. Uh, they've been in close games, lost a couple where they turned the ball over and gave up some big plays. Right now the Lopers are just going head-to-head -head and have built that 10-point lead, a situation Northwest Missouri State is not too familiar with. No, and in both of their losses, they were able to come back and, and get close. So, uh, you know, I would expect that again. Now I see Braden Wright's back in a quarterback again. What a stutter step move by Jamar Moya, the senior. He fooled, I believe it was Harrison, able to get six yards out of that run, and you are cracked. So Braden Wright in the backfield. Oh, you got J.C. Nutter. Stats from that first half. Well, we'll give it to you. Okay, yes, they are keeping it right in there. So Wright, one for three for 20 yards. He did get sacked and did rush for a good gain as well. Hands off up the middle and gets a good gain out of that to Moya. Hand off up the middle seems to really be the best play for Northwest. That one goes for 14. Yeah, that's been probably consistently the best offensive plays is to run the ball right up inside. Actually an 11 yard carry. They've spread the carries out throughout the day. For Moya, that's his fifth, now with 44 rushing yards. He's nearing double digits per carry. 
And they give it to him again. Once more has a good gain before he's ripped down by Atoa Fox seven yards later. Yeah, they're averaging about six, seven yards per carry on this series so far. So um, the UNK is going to have to do a little something to kind of get that shot off. Northwest likes to move pretty quick all in the first place. Not that time is a huge concern for them with still 20 minutes of action left. Jay Harris brought down at the 40. Took a really nice tackle by Jaden Swink, the sophomore defensive end from Scottsdale. Otherwise, he could still be rumbling. Yeah, they like to run a little bit of a uh, cluttered look for the linebackers. They'll bring a receiver one direction and hand back the other direction. It's tough for the linebackers to diagnose where that thing's going to hit. That was a 13-yard run. Every play so far, a running back handoff. This possession. Looking left, now tucking the football. Nice tackle made by the Lopers against right. It was Armani Webster, the senior from Chicago, flexing his muscles after the tackle. Good job by Armani forcing that uh, play. That was trying to hit outside, and it's the job by that defensive back to force things back inside. He did a good job. Jaden Swink again was helping to force him to the outside. Swink, a player that's come on through the middle part of the season. Now second and 10. Play action. They get it to Moya. Moya breaks the first tackle, but can't get past Harrison and company. Him and Nutter combine to hold Moya to no gain. It's third and 10. Another good job on that tunnel screen play that Northwest was able to hit a couple times in the first half. Loper fans on their feet, waving their Lopers versus everyone towels. White towels given out to fans today, and they're making some noise. Braden Wright, the Nebraska native, drops back on third and 10. He's pressured, wants to run, and has a lane. Has the first down, is crunched right at the marker. Or is he just short? Trey O'Gean came in to make the tackle. And he is just short. And Willie just took the wrong angle, and Braden was able to get back outside. And he was marked down. about a couple feet, maybe, shy of the first down marker, which is at the 29. The ball just a nose inside of the 30. Right in the shotgun. Handoff up the middle, met at the hole, but enough for Harris. On the momentum to plow forward for a few yards on fourth and one. Second fourth down conversion this half for the Northwest Missouri State offense. Now, UNK had a chance to get off the field there had Willie just not, you know, slipped on his blitz. I think they'd have gotten out of that. See if the Bearcats go back to the ground game on first down. Trying to get motion. Finally, Griffin responds. They want to throw right way too high. Great right pass is incomplete. <laughs> Trying to get Kashan Griffin, who's six foot one. We would have needed Akeem Olajuwon running that route to find him. On a trampoline. <laughs> I'm. I'm a little curious because it was eight yards per rush, and then all of a sudden, you see three straight pass plays, a run to convert on a scramble, and then back to the pass. Right. I, you know, I, that's. <laughs> Went away from what was working. Now they go back to it, and UNK was waiting for it. So maybe that's why. <laughs> <I don't care. laughs> Darius Swanson 
was filling the Michael hole from the safety day. position. Isaac Soper. Isaac Soper was also there. Maybe a yard, nothing really. Third down and 10. Third down. Another big third down here for the Loper defense. Northwest, their two third down conversions coming on the first drive of the game. Since then, the Lopers defense has been better on that down. UNK brings pressure, and it gets home! A crushing sack, courtesy of Atoa Fox, brings Braden Wright back to the 35-yard line, a loss of nine. Great pressure by Coach Gallus on that call. Atoa was able to get in there, and uh, that's a huge sack. He never saw him coming, was looking to his left the whole way. And that makes the punt unit come out with Mike Hohensey, the starting quarterback, also the punter. The ball at the 35. Fourth and 18. Low kick. Great kick Kicks by back. Hohensey there. And gets about to 25 yards of field position exchanged. So the Lopers take over at their own 10 with 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter on the Midway CDJ scoreboard. Lopers defense, they bent, but they didn't break. Yeah, exactly. They made a couple of big plays there. And, and uh, you know, like we said earlier, even on that third down that Hohensee scrambled, or Braden Wright scrambled and came up just a little short, uh, you know, U and K was there to make the play, just didn't, just didn't get done. So the defense is playing excellent today. Now the Bearcats, they were going straight up the middle with the running back, yeah. slicing through the Loper defense, and then called three straight pass plays. Yeah, that kind of scratch your head a little bit, but you know, you look at it. Um, other than the strip sack for a very short punch in for a touchdown. UNK's held uh, Northwest one to one drive for a touchdown. And that drive was a touchdown because of a running into the kicker exactly. penalty exactly. that did not affect the kick, which was missed. Exactly. So had that penalty flag not been thrown, that drive wouldn't have resulted in any points. Exactly. So the 14 points for the Bearcats are on a three yard touchdown run after the defense set them up at the three and a drive that was finished off following a penalty negating a missed field goal. And that is a testament to Levi Gallus and his defense. Yeah, they've done a wonderful job with the game plan today. Can okay, the Lopers keep the football away from the Bearcats? Just 12 seconds left here in the third quarter. And Davis throwing to the left, has it complete to Montrez Jackson, and Jackson has his head ripped off out of bounds. Got to just a couple yards out of it is all. Yeah, he wasn't able to get too many yards, but what that does is it forces Northwest defense to play the whole field again. And that brings us to the end of quarter number three. A good quarter for the Lopers. They build their lead to 10 points, heading to the final 15 minutes on News Channel now, Nebraska. Tom Dinsdale Automotive has created a better way to buy. We call it your way. Shop online. You can even reserve a vehicle before it gets delivered to our lot. Or stop by and talk to one of our friendly sales experts. Right now, get a 2022 GMC Sierra 1500 Elevation 2.7 liter turbo starting at just 56,440. No matter which way you choose, you'll get the same great customer service that you'd expect from Tom Dinsdale Automotive. It's a new way, a better way, your way. When you want to wear your school spirit on your sleeve, True Nebraskans turn to custom sports screen printing. No matter what activity you want to show off, Custom Sports has you covered in whatever color your spirit comes in. Check out the gallery at NebraskaScreenPrinting.com to see custom designs for every school activity, sport, booster club, and event. And get your group orders in now for a fast and convenient turnaround. Custom Sports Screen Printing at NebraskaScreenPrinting.com. Proud to be Nebraskan.
The third quarter has been a problematic quarter, or really it, it was for about the first five games of the season. The Lopers acknowledged it. They didn't shy away from the fact that they were they were getting beaten that period, but addressed it, and it seems like in the second half of the season they've been much better coming out of half. Yeah, I agree. They they came out, uh, you know, got a stop, and were able to punch one in right away and, and uh, make it a two-score game. I'm Michael Shifley. He's Scott Hoffman. Glad you could be with us this afternoon for Nebraska Kearney Loper football. The Lopers enter at 6-2, and two, facing powerhouse Northwest Missouri State, who owns the same record. It will be tough for the loser of this game to make a case for the playoffs. The winner will likely still need a little bit of help, but this would propel them perhaps into the regional rankings list after this week. So there's lots at stake for both teams in this final 15 minutes. Yeah, that's definitely the case. I mean, the, the team that doesn't come out ahead in this game is probably out of the playoff picture. Uh, and the team that wins still needs some help. But at least you can control your own destiny. T.J. Davis on second down and eight. Rolls to the right, throws that way, and just past the fingertips of Cody Nelson, who has been one of his favorite targets this afternoon. Third down and eight from their own 12 coming up for the Loper offense. T.J. needed to get his shoulders uh, in the direction, or his chest in the direction of the throw. He kind of threw that across his body, and it sailed on him. Uh, but, you know, it, it, he's... He's been known to use his feet a lot more than his arms, so he's, he's having a pretty good day throwing the ball overall today. Thomas Twos, the tight end, is split out to the left side. The six foot two, 240 pound senior from Omaha. And a four wide receiver formation for third and eight. Davis on the draw, trying to make something of it, and the defensive line collapses on him. Jake Fisher. A 6'5", 253-pounder from Smithville, Bears, Missouri. Holds Davis to just a yard. The Lopers game. unable to use much clock. Our only the 12 team. seconds the remaining in the quarter, plus less than a minute on the next two plays before having to punt. Yeah, and they're, in, they're not in great field position here, so Northwest Missouri is going to get pretty good field position uh, depending on this punt. Hunter Krause standing in his own end zone. It's off a high kick that hangs up, spiraling, and caught at the 49. The Bearcats will start in plus territory. And I suppose that's why you punt from the 35. Is if you trust your defense, why wouldn't you trust this? The Bearcats are the best in the conference in, what is it, nine defensive categories? And right. They got a three and out there. Yeah, I mean, that's just good uh, football strategy. Try to pin the opponent and play good defense and get the ball back with good field position and put your offense in a good situation. Northwest Missouri State uh, led by head coach Rich Wright in his sixth season, 48 and 12. That's winning 80% of your games, but he's been there since 2004, was the defensive line coach and special teams coordinator, became the defensive coordinator. And when the head coach left, uh, he was elevated to take over that spot. Does have Nebraska ties. Dana College, the defunct Dana College in yeah. Blair, Nebraska, where he played his college football. He actually started out at, uh, he's from New York originally. Uh, he was a defensive back at SUNY Cortland mm. and uh, transferred to Dana for some reason. <laughs> yeah. And uh, got his degree from Dana College. He actually was on my coaching staff for one year at Dakota State University. He was my D-line coach, and uh, he and I have a long history. Coach Wright has had lots of success at Northwest. He wants to get his Bearcats back to the playoffs. That's, that's notable in Maryville. If you don't make the playoffs, they're used to it. Now, handoff and a huge hole up the middle, bouncing past a couple tacklers is Jamar Moya. Back to the ground game for the Bearcats and back to a nice gain. They get 15 on that run. Yeah, it's like what you said earlier, Michael. I mean, they were, they were doing that in the previous drive and went away from it. So they come right back to it for a 15-yard gain. So kind of makes you wonder why they would leave that. 
Such good field position. It's, it's nearly field goal range already after one carry for Northwest Missouri State. They give it back to Moya, hurdles one tackler, and plows up to the 29 for a gain of five. Make that the 28, a gain of six. Moya has been the feature back here in the second half. Now with seven carries for 56 yards, averaging eight yards per tote. Now he heads to the sideline in favor of Jay Harris for, first, for second down and four. Give to Harris. He's tripped up by J.C. Nutter, who Jay falls Harris forward for a carrier. first down and another four-yard gain. That was an odd-looking play. It looked like the, the everybody left before this oh, ball was on the that's good for a I thought I saw the slot receiver on the left side flinch some. That's a... No flag thrown. Braden Wright remaining at quarterback, by the way. Hands it off once more, and there's a big hole. Harris finds the sideline and leaps into the end zone for a touchdown. A 23-yard score for Harris and Northwest Missouri State back to, to within one score. Yeah, you had to figure eventually that was going to pop. And uh, it looked like one of our defenders didn't exactly take the right angle, and they were able to get outside, and he was able to score. So the ground game they didn't attempt to pass. A rushing attack takes the Bearcats in for six. Trying to make it seven. Lamel, the point after. Right on the money. And I hope you weren't writing this one off yet. It's a three point game. UNK in front 24 21 with 12 and a half remaining on the Midway CDJ scoreboard. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. This is the modern version of Smash Mouth football. Nothing too special for Northwest Missouri State, but in half number two, they've really got their ground game going, and Jay Harris scores his second rushing touchdown of the season to bring it to a three-point contest. Yeah, they, they just kind of flat out laid their ears back and decided they were going to run the football, and it was pretty effective. The Bearcats punted away after their drive floundered at the end of the third quarter. And since then, their defense held Nebraska Kearney to three plays, three yards, in a one-minute and three-second drive. And then the offense embarked on a four-play, 50-yard drive that took just a minute 35. <laughs> and that's the ideal scenario if you're yeah. a Northwest Missouri State supporter. Yeah, hopefully UNK can get some field position here and get a couple of first downs and get that field flipped again. Lamel. He's had a lot of touchbacks today. This one is angled, taken by Maisner from the eight. He's back to the 23, trying to pop to the outside and twist up to the 25-yard line. That's where... T.J. Davis will trot out to lead this Loper offense, trying to respond to the Bearcat Tackle offensive Bearcat score. By number 31, Carter Olsen. UNK passing the ball has been effective. 188 yards through the air compared to a buck 36 on the ground. Really a shocking turnaround to see them out passing them rushing attack by more than 50 yards. Yeah, that's contrary to what you anticipate for the Lopers. 
to the ground game to start this drive. Huge blow delivered by Damian Kearns to help spring T.J. Davis for about five, six, I'll give him six yards on first down. Uh, Damian Kearns is a great running back, but part of the reason he plays is because of his blocking ability. Mm. He got a good chest into the linebacker Andrew Bloom, the junior from Glenwood, Iowa. Damien's had a pretty good day. He scored a touchdown, caught a big pass, and laid some big blocks out there. Five foot ten, 190 pounds, sophomore from Denver, one of several Coloradans on this roster. Davis running to the right, bouncing outside, shedding a tackle, and do they get him the first down? He's to the 34, a yard shy, a good three yard rush by Davis to set up third and one. Another big third down here for the UNK offense. Last time they were in this situation, of course, it was a fourth down, but they tried to punch one up inside and weren't able to do so. So hopefully they can get a first down and keep those chains moving. Twos is in as the tight end, standing behind the right tackle. The back is Kearns. He gets the football, gets the first down and more. Breaks it outside and tripped up at the 46. 13 yards on third and one for the sophomore from Denver. That's the kind of thing that UNK needs to do now is occasionally hit one of those runs that will keep the chains moving and take time off the clock. Establish the run game a little bit themselves as well. Huge conversion for Nebraska Kearney, trying to keep the pressure on Northwest Missouri State, who trails by three. Jackson, he was hit right the second he got the football. Terrific penetration from Jake Fisher, who records the tackle for loss. Yeah, it looks like the right tackle missed his block a little bit, and they were able to get penetration. And Montrez isn't a very big player, so it's not going to take much to knock him to the ground like that. Fisher came in to today with four and a half sacks, seven and a half tackles for loss. On most teams, that would be maybe second, third on the team. He's fifth or sixth because <laughs> <Right. laughs> there are so many tackles for loss forced by this defensive line and linebacking unit for Northwest. On second and 15, Davis stands strong in the pocket, delivers a risky football, and he's fortunate that Rhett Jordan, the sophomore from Waverly, Nebraska, didn't come up with that football intended for Jaquan Connors. Yeah, that was a risky pass. It kind of floated a little bit on TJ. The defensive back, number 23, made a good play on it. Jackson picked up the blitz, but it was about to get home on Davis. Tough throw. Now the defensive back for Northwest still down. And that's Khalil Smith, the sophomore from Independence, Missouri. We'll step aside as they tend to Smith. The Lopers clinging to a three-point lead with 9.44 remaining in the fourth. As the world keeps changing, so is the way to purchase a new car. Across the nation, there are lengthy delays with new vehicle requests and many being built to order. At Zollner Ford of Beatrice, we're making it easy. With our new Save a Spot program, you can be one of the first in line. We've got a seamless pre-order process that guarantees your reservation is secure and in the queue. And our sales professionals will keep you updated every step of the way on the status of your vehicle. Come reserve yours today. Zollner Ford of Beatrice. Khalil Smith, the corner, able to walk off on his own power and brings up third down and 15 for UNK. Time for Drew Thatcher to draw up a play. He splits three wide to the left side, has twos the tight end going out on the right. Davis steps up, trying to run for it, gets to the outside, twos lays a block, and Davis gets the first down, depending on the spot. Wait, he stepped out. You're saying he's short, yep. He stepped out of bounds at the 49 before he fell out of bounds. It was way later. We'll get a great look on this replay. Fourth down, UNK. And he 
did get out before he couldn't tiptoe the line of the sideline. Got 11 yards out of it to make it fourth down and four. And a late decision to send out the punting unit for UNK. What that does, though, is if Hunter can get a good punt here, you know, you're going to put Northwest back in a hole quite a bit. High spiraling kick. Fair caught at the 10. That's a 42-yard punt. Exactly what you were looking for if you're Coach Josh Lynn trying to beat Northwest Missouri State for the second time. I was here back in 2019 on the call on News Channel Nebraska when they got it done. And, man, was this place going wild. Yeah, it was rocking that day. It was a great job by UNK, and hopefully we can make that happen again with nine minutes left. Although Northwest got a little bit of momentum, UNK did a pretty good job of getting a couple of first downs there and flipping the field. Remembering back to that game, that was really the T.J. Davis coming out party. He had made some plays earlier in the season, but you weren't sure if that was just a guy that nobody had film on yet, but his athleticism was on full display that afternoon back in 2019. And since then, it's been the T.J. Davis show. And uh, even uh, I remember talking to Darius Swanson, the All-American safety before the season, and, and when asked about Davis, he just said, smiled and said, in T.J. we trust. <laughs> That's right. Well, he has, a, you know, he's become such a special player for the Lopers. And just like on that last play, uh, he was just a couple inches away from making a huge first down. Uh, he is just really such a special person. Desperately wants to get to the playoffs. Yes. We didn't air the press conference against Emporia State. TJ was slumped against a locker with a towel over his head for the entirety of the press conference. He didn't want to leave. Northwest Missouri State opts to keep Braden right at quarterback. They get another good hole, and Moya exposes it. And he's streaking down the right sideline for a huge gash. Out of bounds at the 45-yard line. A 35-yard run on first down, and say goodbye to the good field position. Right now, Northwest's offensive line is just dominating the front seven of the Lopers. And UNK's going to have to try to do something to get that changed. And that's the longest run of the season for Jamar Moya, 35 yards. Can the Loper defense adjust to this rushing attack? They give it to Harris. And Harrison is there to stand him up initially. But still four yards, largely thanks to the work of that offensive line for the Bearcats. Yeah, they were uh, a little bit nicked up throughout the year. And, and uh, you know, the kind of the word was they weren't quite as good as in the past. But right now they're showing they're pretty dominant. UNK won the third quarter 7-0. That's where it stands in the fourth quarter the other way. And the Bearcats with the momentum. Second down and six. And a keeper. And here's Wright breaking free. Hit hard out of bounds by Gabe Amagatcher. But not before the sticks move on a 20-yard run. That was a good call by the offensive coordinator for Northwest Missouri because uh, UNK was really playing the running back there. It was a good job by Braden Wright pulling that down and uh, getting some positive yards. Derek Weyer, the six foot six, 311 pound sophomore lineman from Harlan, Iowa, got a pancake block on J.C. Nutter that play. Nutter might be arguing for a holding. On first and 10, it's a handoff on the right side. Now it's Brady's turn. Jaden Brady breaks an arm tackle. And all of a sudden, the Loper defense, which was a pretty sure tackling unit in the first half and third quarter, isn't able to bring down ball carriers. Yeah, it's getting to be uh, tough on the defense. You know, they just can't be able to be out on the field and just take uh, hit after hit. It hasn't mattered who's at quarterback. Wright hasn't been used, save for his legs a couple of times. Right. 
and and you know Northwest Missouri has really good oh, balance, or, uh, depth at the running back position, and they're using them all. So fresh legs are attacking the Loper defense. Lopers getting a taste of their own medicine. Normally the ones inflicting the blow with the run. And their depth at running back, which goes four, maybe five deep. We're seeing four deep for Northwest Missouri State. After a three-yard plunge up the middle, it's second and seven. Moya is the back. Right on a designed run. Another good gain before right Nutter shoves him down inside the 10 at the six yard line. That's a five yard pickup to set up third and two. UNK's defense needs all the fan support it can get. Uh, you got to figure they're going to punch it in the middle here and, and uh, just try to get the first down. They've done pretty good at that before. Wright fakes it, keeps it, and the quarterback scores. Right, right with the quarterback keeper. The six foot two, 204 pound right senior from Elkhorn South High School in Omaha. Well, that was an impressive drive by Northwest. They didn't throw the ball once, they ran it. Uh, mix it up between the running back runs and quarterback runs and we're able to just kind of dominate the Loper defense. Northwest Missouri State in front for the second time this game. And the extra point makes it 10, Ramble make that 14 zero. in a row for Northwest Missouri State. UNK in trouble, trailing 28-24 with 5.41 remaining on the Aurora Cooperative scoreboard here at Cope Stadium. Claybaugh Pharmacy provides you with all the pharmacy options a person would need. As a full service pharmacy, we give you all the traditional options, but also have the modern technology to maintain your profiles. Maybe you're busy. Head to ClayballPharmacy.com. Click on Online Refills to get your prescriptions filled from the convenience of your home. Claybaugh Pharmacy and Gift Shop, your hometown family-owned pharmacy. Northwest Missouri State imposing its will on the ground. A seven play, 90 yard drive, all of it rushing yards. And the Bearcats jump in front by four points with just 5.41 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Michael Shively, Scott Hoffman with you. And we talked during that defensive drive about TJ Davis, the All-American quarterback for the Lopers. And this is exactly what he wants. The ball in his hands with a chance to go ahead late against Northwest Missouri State on homecoming day. Yeah, UNK is going to have to answer here. Hopefully they've got some plays dialed up and make some things happen and can put a long drive together and score a touchdown and win the game. Low kick taken by Thomas Tews at the 22-yard line. Runs up to the 33 where a sure tackle is made Thomas by Northwest Tunes Missouri State's UNK. Andrew Bloom, the junior linebacker. Tackle for Northwest. And said both sides exchanging words afterwards. All the Lopers offense quiet here in quarter number four. Haven't been able to get too much going really since fourth down and one when they had a chance to really break right. the game open. Couldn't get that one yard, turned it over on downs, and Northwest Missouri State has controlled the game on both sides of the football since. Yeah, UNK is going to have to mix things up a little bit and uh, hopefully get some things going. Davis fakes the run, wants to throw, rolling out to his left and running out of time. Finally unloads out of bounds. His pass is incomplete. Second down, UNK. And that's not the kind of way you want to start the drive. You need something positive to get, you know, uh, at least on this second down, hopefully get five or six yards so third down is manageable. Montrez Jackson comes in. Kearns remains in, so a two-back set. 
And the option was working decently well, second and third quarters. Maybe that's something you consider going back to. Yeah. Play action hasn't yielded much through the air of late. Davis on play action. This time goes deep down the left sideline for Cody Nelson. Makes the catch at the 25 and brought down inside the 10 yard line. What a huge play by the UNK offense there. <laughs> a 60 yard pass play. Nelson wide open and Davis delivered it. First and goal from the nine. And that's why I'm not the offensive coordinator. <laughs> well, I was looking for five to six yards, not 65, but that, that'll work. Knocked down. Pass Quick pass and good penetration by Zach Howard, the senior defensive tackle. It's second and goal from the eight. Zane Schwong, we haven't seen him much. The redshirt freshman from Waverly checks in. Standing to the right of Davis. Zane has kind of been their guy down close to the end zone all, all year. Now out of the pistol. David, oh, it's a toss back to Davis and TJ tripped up inside the five. So they gave to Schwung and then ran essentially an option play. Got about four out of it, maybe five. Zane was an option quarterback at Waverly High School, so a little wrinkle there by Coach Thatcher. He's drawn up some doozies today. What a time to break that one out, setting up third down and goal from the three with the Lopers trailing by three against their nemesis, the Bearcats out of Northwest Missouri State. Kern's a late addition, Schwong checking out. Only seven seconds on the play clock. The Lopers need to snap it, and they get it off. Give no fake to Kearns. Davis stood up and knocked backwards. Nothing on that design QB run. They lost a couple, and it's fourth and goal from the five. Coach Lynn might have been wise to just take the time out there and get organized a little bit. So this is, this is pretty much ball game right here. The defense has been leaking. The Lopers can ill afford to give it back to Northwest Missouri State without the lead. Davis with 10 seconds on the play clock, positioning Kearns to his right. The All-American rolling right, running out of time and throws too high on fourth and goal the northwest missouri state defense denies nebraska carney tried to roll tj out and tried to run a little flood uh, route into the end zone there just wasn't anybody open good play by the northwest defense i'm trying to maybe free up nelson again 6'1 190. he's been a good corner of the end zone type of target but was Blanketed there. So it's up to the UNK defense needing to force a three and out. Maybe they can allow one first down. They have three timeouts left. Field position to their advantage. But Northwest Missouri State's been running it at will. Give to Moya, and he's hit right away. Tell Spees, the senior from Mullen, and a timeout taken by Nebraska Carney. We'll step aside with the Lopers trailing by four. 3.04 left in the game. 
At first, I was really nervous and intimidated to buy a ring. My experience at Starter Hamel was very easy. I felt like I walked out with the ring that was going to make her go wow and say yes. I love my ring. It is so beautiful. I get compliments on it all the time. I always tell them Starter Heyman. I love it. Yeah, we would definitely recommend Starter Heyman. We're definitely, definitely coming, coming back. back. <laughs> sure. We have a wedding band to buy. So. We do, yes. We have a wedding band, so we'll be back for that. Sarder Heyman Jewelers, Downtown 12th and O, South Point Pavilions, and Grand Island. Get more for your trade now at Midway and Carney. Buy a new Wagoneer Series 2 today with low 1.9% APR financing for 72 months. Midway Chrysler Dodge, Jeep Ram, and Carney. Or think midway.com slash CDJR. Michael Shively, Scott Hoffman with you. Second and 11 out of the Northwest Missouri State time or out of the UNK timeout. Northwest runs a pass play and it stood up. Moya runs into Darius Swanson. The sure tackling senior holds him to just a one yard gain. Third down and 10 coming up and UNK calls timeout again. That was a defensive stop that was much needed on that play. Without a doubt, you know, they ran a little wrinkle there, kind of a little play action pass and tried to get Moy out into the perimeter and good job by Darius Swanson. So UNK is struggling so much against the run. A 90 yard drive, last possession for Northwest, all of it on the ground. But the first play, a traditional handoff stuffed by Tell Spees on a one-on-one -on -one tackle. And then Swanson on the quick pass made the stop. And that's exactly what Levi Gallus wanted to see. Without a doubt. Now is another big third down here. Mm. You just have to get the stop and get the defense off the field, the offense back on the field. Despite the Bearcats' success here in the fourth quarter with two touchdown drives, they still haven't been that good at third down, just yeah. three for 12 on the afternoon. Right, turnover here would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it on the early Christmas list. Third down and 10, backed up at their own six. Northwest Missouri State with Braden right at quarterback. Hand off. Moya spins free. He's trying to fight, and he does Jamar near the Moya first down. Jamar Moya runs for 10 forward. yards, gets a first down. A Herculean effort. Huge play. By the 185 pound senior. Huge play by Moya. <laughs> he was hit just a yard past the line of scrimmage, then drove forward through a linebacker. He had Trey O'Gean, actually, the safety, came in and couldn't push him back. Moya. We're looking at a, is that a review signal that just came in? Yeah, they're heading be. to the tent, so they're going to review the spot. And that is likely a challenge by UNK, which you need to have a timeout to do if you don't win the challenge, then you lose your timeout. And the Lopers will be without a timeout with 2.45 left. <laughs> well, Jamar like Moya, I mean, he just he just put the Bearcats on his yeah. back. That was not a first down run, no. unless he was the guy with the ball. Without a doubt, I, UNK had people in position to, to get him down, and he just kept his legs churning. So it'll be interesting to see where this comes in. I initially thought he was a little short, but, you know, the officials are right there on the spot. It is not our camera feed, so they're using the the feed that the, the teams have for their game film. There are a few different angles of it, and including a high angle, but nothing like the replay that you'd see in Division One college right. football or the NFL. Right. The, there is no replay official. 
these referees are in the booth or in the, uh, the tent reviewing it, and they have made their decision. either confirmed or stood. I couldn't quite make it out. So the Lopers lose their timeout. I'm curious if, if that means that the clock will start on the placement of the football here or not. Uh, because they moved the chains, I would think they probably would start the clock on the ready for play here. So they could still run 25 seconds off. Yeah. It doesn't work like it was a timeout. Yeah, he, he started the clock. Did not start the game clock, started oh, the play clock. Started so at 2.45, they clock. snap and run outside. Moya tackled inbounds by Sione Tafalele. Second down and 11. Tell Spees also in the area of that tackle. So Nebraska Kearney, well, they will be down to almost nothing if they're able to get the football back. Yeah, if they get it back, it's going to be 30 seconds or less, probably. Moya cut out his legs this time, no game. Play clock starts at 40. No game. Trickles down. The Bearcats milking every second they can. Can the Lopers get the third down stop? Leave the door open a crack for their offense. Two timeouts for the Bearcats. It looks like they'll take one here. Draining every single second they can with one minute and 15 seconds left. They take the time out. A four point game. And you think back, <laughs> there's a couple of things where if you're the Lopers that you'd want back in this right. scenario, mainly that to uh, Oh, there's, there's so many to go through. Yeah. We're thinking now back to the first half with the running into the right. kicker penalty that resulted in a seven-point differential. Yeah. You, you face a good defense, you're going to have things like the strip sack. But right. then here in the fourth quarter, the failed fourth and one attempt. And just a moment ago, Jamar Moya's run. Yeah. And, you know, UNK, I mean, this has been one heck of a football game by both, by both teams. It really has. And, uh, you know, there's always about four or five plays that make the difference in a football game. You're just never quite sure when they're going to happen. So, uh, you know, UNK's had opportunities, and Northwest Missouri, to give them credit, has capitalized when they got the chance. And still an opportunity for UNK. T.J. Davis is throwing on the sideline as we speak, hoping there will be some time left for him to try to lead a game-winning drive. Third down and 11 with one minute and 15 seconds left. Moya stands to the right of Braden Wright. They fake it to him, Wright to the outside, slides down. Right with the quarterback keeper. Got three Back yards, 40 Marquez. seconds, starts two seconds ago. So it looks like about 24 seconds left. And Northwest is going to let that clock go all the way down to one second on the play clock and call timeout, yep. the Bearcats' final timeout. Atoa Fox. Strolling out to midfield, awaiting this punt. Fox uh, has been really solid in that role. There's the timeout with 28 seconds. 
They're calling Fox back in, but he hasn't been a return man that bust no. big plays. No, he's he's back there to catch the football and and uh, you know try to keep the field position where it is, as opposed to trying to take it to the house. So, um, you know, we just kind of have to see where it goes. Had you know ifs and buts, like we always say, but uh, you know had. Had uh, TJ been able to hit Cody Nelson in stride for a touchdown, you know, obviously things would be a little bit different. But, you know, that's the way football players or how football works, you know. So Northwest will we'll see how how they elect to punt it with Hoensey. It's been a, a traditional look, not a rugby style that could wind another couple seconds or right. so off, but a straight punt if that takes six seven seconds before it's fair caught possibly by Fox then you have about 20 seconds and no timeouts right we'll see it how it plays out with Hohensee standing at his own two and Fox standing at his own 45 it's a booming spiral kick that takes a hop, Fox takes it at the 35, returns it back to the 40, dips ahead to the 44, breaks free from another tackle and needs to go down, does at the 47, and that took 14 seconds. Yeah, he might have been better off just stepping out of bounds right there and saving as much clock as he could. About two plays, maybe three. T.J. Davis does have a strong arm, but he'll need protection. And it'll be, it would be a, a heck of a heave from T.J. to get it all the way to the end zone from here. So they'll be looking for something before the Hail Mary. Yeah, I would think he tried to throw it down the field about 15, 20 yards and then take a shot at the end zone. Davis. Throws, caught, first down, go down, losing the football, Xavier Delk, and Northwest is claiming they have it. They do. Xavier Delk trying to make a play after making the catch and lost the football. The Bearcats recover it, and Northwest Missouri State comes from down 10 to break the hearts of the UNK Lopers at Cope Stadium. Yeah, See what happens here with Delk. He's trying to get down there and then stays up and loses the football. Well, players try to try to make things happen, try to make plays, and you know, Xavier's done a lot for this football team this year, and unfortunately just came up a little bit short there. Yeah, still would have been facing that was what it ended up at the forty two, would have been about the thirty nine and right. Would have had one, maybe two plays from the 39 to score a touchdown. And Braden Wright kneels. The Nebraska native comes in in relief of Mike Hoensey and helps navigate Northwest Missouri State to a come from behind win. The Bearcats lean on their ground game to gash the Loper defense and preserve their chances at another trip to the Division II playoffs. A tough loss for the UNK Lopers who fall to six and three on the season. We'll wow. talk about it in the postgame show. We'll have your top plays. Look ahead to next week. And that'll be on the other side here on NCN. Let your next adventure take flight in Sarpy County, Nebraska for some high flying fun. Legendary family adventures. Up this world shopping. Star studded evenings. And award winning experiences. Our flights are never canceled. Stanley, play and plan your getaway at GoSarpy.com. NCN Sports is brought to you by Cunningham's on the Lake and Cunningham's on the Bricks, located in Kearney. Check out our Twitter page and follow us on Twitter at NCN Sports. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. 
Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. Other companies have the revolving door. Every time we come into Schaefer's, it's always the same people. The big thing to me is they know you by name. They know who you are, which makes a person like myself feel just warm and welcome here. And that's what's great about Schaefer's. Schaefer's has the essential Whirlpool appliances you need, from refrigerators and air fry ranges to lawn repairs to keep your clothes clean and sanitized at everyday low prices. At Schaefer's, we are more than just TVs and appliances. As the world keeps changing, so is the way to purchase a new car. Across the nation, there are lengthy delays with new vehicle requests and many being built to order. At Zollner Ford of Beatrice, we're making it easy. With our new Save a Spot program, you can be one of the first in line. We've got a seamless pre-order process that guarantees your reservation is secure and in the queue. And our sales professionals will keep you updated every step of the way on the status of your vehicle. Come reserve yours today. Zollner Ford of Beatrice. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. Exciting news from Eye Care Associates of Columbus. We are now working together with clinics in Norfolk and Grand Island to form Unity Eye Centers. Yes, it's a new name, but what does it mean for you? Joining together allows us to deliver and share state-of-the-art technology and provide a higher level of care for every patient. Best of all, it's still the same owners and you'll see the same welcoming faces. At Unity Eye Centers, we want to continue to be your eye doctor of choice. Come see the difference that quality eye care can deliver. The new 98.9 The Vibe is the soundtrack of your generation. With a music vault jam-packed with endless stacks of the Tri-Cities' greatest hits. Classic songs. Greatest hits. The soundtrack of your generation. 98.9 The Vibe. NCN Sports is brought to you by Currency. If your business needs help financing big ticket items, visit GoCurrency.com for details. And by Custom Sports. Represent your school and look good doing it with Custom Sports. Well, the loss to Emporia State, that one stung. This is a deeper feeling than yeah. that for the Nebraska Kearney Lopers, a season that began with expectations through the roof. It's not over. There's still games to play and statements to make, and you, who knows about a possible bowl game. Right. But playoff conversations stop now in, in a gut-wrenching fashion against a Northwest Missouri State team that I want to say was outclassed. I want to say UNK was the better team today, and, and I think they were, but it's tough to say that when Northwest runs for 150 yards in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that, that was just, um, you know, what we did not expect. The UNK defense had been – uh, playing lights out for three quarters. And from time to time, you saw Northwest pop some runs, and we were even, even questioning why would they throw the ball mm -hmm. in uh, one of their series in the third, in the third quarter. 
they kind of took themselves out of it, and they came out in the fourth quarter. They must have had a discussion amongst the coaching staff and said, we're just going to run the football, and it was effective. And uh, two straight series where they didn't even throw the ball and scored touchdowns, 90 yards. Uh, seven one, plays. Seven plays on the ground. That's UNK-type offense. And uh, unfortunately, Lopers just came up short. They had opportunities to – to pull it out, just just didn't get it done. 312 rushing yards for Northwest Missouri State, a team that averages just 157. All right, let's get right into, into it. Your top plays. Top plays are brought to you by Currency. Need financing for RVs, ATVs, or other expensive items? Currency is here to help. Visit GoCurrency.com today. 6-2 and two against 6-2. and two. Win and your playoff hopes stay alive, and that's exactly what UNK wants. It's T.J. Davis finding A.J. McPhee on a third and goal situation for the score. Northwest Missouri State takes advantage of a running into the kicker penalty that negated a missed field goal. They get seven points. The field goal works out for Junior Gonzalez. That's a 45-yarder to put the Lopers back in front by three. Now trying to build on it. T.J. Davis in trouble. He goes down, loses the football. It's recovered by Northwest Missouri State's Jake Fisher, who returns turns it to the three-yard line. That's a huge momentum swing in favor of the Bearcats who plunge in from three yards out with Jay Harris, the freshman running back from Wentzville, Missouri, puts the Bearcats in front for the first time with four minutes left in the first half. Do the Lopers have an answer? Yes, they do. It's T.J. Davis, the All-American quarterback, gets a block from his running back, cuts inside and finds Paydirt, and the lead swings back to Nebraska Kearney at the end of the first half. Second half action now. Looking to throw, it's Mike Hoensee of Northwest, and he throws it to J.C. Nutter. The senior comes up with his first interception of the season at a huge moment. Now UNK trying to capitalize. Damian Kearns does the honors from 30 yards away, gets a wide open crease, and takes it to the house. Now a 10-point advantage for UNK in the fourth quarter, but the running game gets rolling for Northwest. That's Harris with his second touchdown of the game and a sign of things to come. The Bearcats continue to run the football. It's Braden Wright rushing this one in for a score, and the Bearcats are now in front again, and they stick with the run game. And that that last drive was a seven-play 90-yard game. 90-yard drive all on the ground. Now trying to run out the clock on third down and 10. Jamar Moya carries the defenders for 10 yards, helps drain the clock. UNK in desperation mode. Xavier Delk trying to make a play, loses the football, and the Bearcats recover it to seal a come-from-behind 28-24 to victory. Northwest Missouri State improves to 7-2, and two, and Nebraska Kearney drops to 6-3. and three. Top plays brought to you by Currency. We want to remind you that I will have an interview with Coach Josh Lynn coming up uh, after our broadcast concludes. You can watch it later this afternoon at newschannelnebraska.com. Your postgame coach's interview is sponsored by 98.9 The Vibe. Well, a heartbreaker for the Lopers, and it doesn't get easier. Central Oklahoma, a team that beat Northwest Missouri State, comes to town next Saturday. Yeah, uh, Central's... Coming off, going to be coming off of a loss today, but you just have to see how UNK's mindset is uh, after this heartbreaker. It's it's just a, a crazy season. Um, we had the schedule was pretty much in our favor. We had Pittsburgh State at home and lost in the last 12 seconds of the game. Uh, Emporia State came to our place and kind of got after us a little bit. And then for the most part, we outplayed the Bearcats for three and a half quarters and just didn't come up with the win. So, um, you know, you hope the UNK seniors come back and want to finish this season with a strong uh, finish and hopefully get into a bowl game, but your heart does break for some of these kids.
A season that uh, means so much to so many who returned for an extra season granted by the pandemic or or came back on a redshirt season or stuck around and a guy like Davis that surely had opportunities elsewhere and you wish success for them and just came up a little bit short against a great team here this afternoon. We will be back here to round out the season next week against Central Oklahoma, a 1 o'clock kickoff, a 1245 broadcast start. We hope to talk to you then. Until then, thanks so much to all of our sponsors for making this possible. Thanks to our outstanding crew led by Tyler Lechner and our live events production truck here today. And thank you to you for tuning in. On behalf of Scott Hoffman, I'm Michael Shively signing off from Cope Stadium. Have a great rest of your day.